A lot of crazy news today. It's really nuts for a Friday. In Moscow, I believe the, the death count is up to 70. Major terror attack uh, took place. There was a, a theater show. I believe it was a shopping mall. I want to make sure I'm getting this right. These are it's like details. an entertainment center, so it's all kind of combined together, the, like a big mall. Yeah, the videos are absolutely crazy. People are being gunned down. It's it's horrifying. And, uh, uh, of course, in, initially, this is, this is Moscow, so a lot of people were wondering if Ukraine was involved. Ukraine has denied involvement. Apparently now, according to the media, it's being widely reported that ISIS has claimed responsibility. I got to be honest. When I heard that, I went, huh? Does ISIS still exist? I did not realize that. Okay, well, you know. Now, the crazy thing is, it was a couple weeks ago, the U.S. issued a, uh, the State Department issued a warning about an uh, imminent terror attack in Moscow. So we're going to go through all those details, break that down. Uh, got a lot of crazy news today. The House has passed the mini omnibus bill. Woohoo! We're all excited about that. And I think more Democrats voted for it than Republicans. Oh, it's so great. Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, filed to vacate Speaker Johnson. Matt Gates is saying this could lead to a Democrat Speaker of the House. That's exactly what I was thinking. And then, of course, Candace Owens is officially out at the Daily Wire. And the internet lit up when they found out there is a lot going on. Some of her podcast episodes are unavailable right now. And people are speculating as to what was the cause of this. Um... I'll just say right off the bat, I think it was probably the, the contract ended, you know, so that's really the simple version. But we'll definitely get into some of those missing episodes and talk about all of this uh, crazy, crazy news that's going on. Uh, before we get started, head over to castbrew.com. Buy Cast Brew Coffee to support the work we do. Everyone loves Appalachian Nights. We're able to maintain it in stock. We are ordering this stuff so quickly. Guys, we order thousands of bags. Okay, check it out. Rewrives with Roberto Jr. was a Halloween run. It's, 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 it's almost April. And we haven't been able to sell all of our re-rides with Roberto Jr. Because the limited, the, lim the, the minimum order was 5000 So I was like, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll see what we do. We still have it. We still have it available. The way, the way it works really is the bags are a minimum of 5000 And then the coffee is made uh, every, every like, certain amount of bag cycle. They, they, they will roast more of the blend. And so we haven't been able to offload all of our bags of re-rides with Roberto Jr. And Mr. Bocas Pumpkin Spice Experience, of course, is retiring with the untimely passing of Mr. Bocas. Rest in peace. Uh, but we will be launching a new in memoriam for him uh, with a new blend. Uh, the, the thing is, with, with all that, we, we go through thousands upon thousands of bags of Appalachian Nights. Uh, okay, I'm glad. That's like our signature blend. The crazy thing is, re uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Rise with Roberto Jr. was originally our like signature with Roberto Jr. on the bag. And Appalachian Nights was an afterthought. But then once people ordered it, that's all they wanted. And so I'm, I'm begging, I'm begging you to buy our other coffee. It's good. <laughs> it is. I know Appalachian Nights is good, but throw in an extra bag of something else while you're at it. Now, nah, I can't blame you. The only thing I drink is Appalachian Nights. That's all, that, that's all, we're, all we're drinking. So uh, support us over at Casper.com. Head over to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member to support our work directly. And uh, you'll get access to our Discord server, which I think is pretty important. As a member of the Discord server, you're hanging out with like-minded individuals, you're building community, you're networking. So uh, please consider that. And uh, this show is principally funded thanks and thanks to memberships. We do have sponsorships uh, periodically. Of course, Cast Brew, we sponsor ourselves. But I want to stress, all of the sales of Cast Brew stay in Cast Brew. We're, we're using the, the funds from Cast Brew when, we, when, when you buy the coffee to help build the physical location and hopefully locations across the country. That's the goal of Cast Brew. So it does support us, but our physical endeavors, if you want to support the show directly, uh, specifically, it's, you know, membership, but, you know, it's all good. Smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight, you already heard he was here, Jack Sobic. What's up, guys? Good to be back. Welcome to the beginning of democracy. Maybe not the, the end. Well, we, we ended it already, so now, now we have to begin a new democracy. I... I love that arc. The Jack, the, the very obvious, the crowd laughs. You 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 chuckle as you're saying it. Man, that and then was just... CNN's like, Jack Posobiec wants to end democracy. That was <laughs> something. I mean, you, you do different stuff. You know, you do shows every day, every yeah. night. You come up with I was different jealous. things. And you never know what's really going to take off. Well, it's because I kind of speed ran all the different things you're not supposed to talk about. Because I hit... Ending democracy and January 6th. And then I held up a rosary and said, we're going to replace everything with this. <laughs> um, and I kind of just speed ran at that all at once. And um, 
you know, then I did, you know, the whole speech about how we're going to end democracy and by, you know, destroying uh, voter ID checks and um, making it so that you can't actually audit the election and we're going to censor people in social media, arrest our uh, main political opponent four times in the midst of an election and, you know, all of this. And, and they just didn't even care. That's, and even though I, I did, I did appreciate when Bill Maher was going on and, oh, that was and bringing amazing. it up because you could really tell that when he started reading it, he, he probably had been handed it. I totally agree with yep. your analysis that he had been handed uh, like a note card from his staff who was like all woke and upset about <laughs> what I said. But then something kind of, you can see him like halfway yep. through the quote where he's like, this guy's joking. he's like, oh wait, this is a bit, this is yep. not, you know, this, this is, I get this. This you know, is something, was... he wrote this and he was doing a bit and you don't get it. And now I have to stick with it because I've already started it <laughs> and now I'm stuck here. So I'm just going to let her. That's embarrassing. Let her go with it. It was, it was, yeah, we, I embarrassed Bill Maher without even being on Bill Maher, which is amazing. Uh, you have a new book. We have a book. The book is called The Unhumans. Um, so it's, it's, we're doing pre-sales right now. It is basically, we take, we took all the communist history episodes that I did uh, last year, the China files. And then this, just this past Christmas, um, all the chronicles of the revolution, basically every communist revolution that you've seen from around the world. And what myself and my co-author on this is Joshua Lysak, and we've systematized a communist revolution. So we found, we've broken this out into various stages, OPE, Operational Planning of the Environment, how it's done pre-revolution, in the midst of a revolution, in the current revolution, and come up with a system to actually defeat them at various stages of the revolution. Uh, right on. So uh, you're the uh, you're a host over at Human Events. Everybody knows who you are, I guess. Is there anything else you want to say before I was going to interject something? Uh, I'll say happy birthday to Tanya Tate because it was a birthday oh, yesterday. There you go. Nice. So I just have to read this real quick. Um, we got a super chat from Pren Prent M. Roberto Jr. gets a blend, then dies. Mr. Bocus gets a blend, then dies. No. Can someone go check on Alex Stein? Yo, <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was just in the hospital, guys. <laughs> I didn't even know he was sick. <laughs> he was... It was just in the hospital. What's going on? I called him. I haven't heard back from him. Called him that, that, is, that, is a, that is not a funny meme. Uh, Phil's hanging out. How you doing, guys? My <laughs> name is Phil Labonte. I'm the lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains. I'm an anti-communist and a counter-revolutionary. How you doing, Andy? I'm sitting here with all these communists. Anti-communists, I mean. Well, yes. you know, we're yeah. smart and yeah. know that things that communists do end up ending in piles of dead bodies. Yo, <laughs> Helldivers 2, Sick, which right? we should play for our democracy. It's for such predictive democracy. programming. Are you it's down so, with that? It, Are you noticing it? They're like, for our democracy, and they fight these so, bugs. Well, I was told it was satire. It's, it is. Yeah, it's so yeah, right it's on the nose. little kids, they wouldn't know that. Uh, it's like, okay. it's both. Um, that's the problem with satire sometimes. Did you write that on humans, or are you like a publisher? Or so I'm. Uh, I'm the. Uh, I'm one of the authors. There's two authors: myself, cool. Joshua Lysak, and and it's no. It's like what Phil's saying. It's and and conservatives, by the way, conservatives, moderates, and centrists need a software upgrade on all this. Yes, because people sit there and okay, take what you just said: hundred million bodies piled up, and they'll say. Oh, wow. How can people still support communism if it's already, you know, killed 100 million people? Wouldn't they think that's wrong? Yes. If you are dealing with people who are reasonable. If they're dealing with people who are not communists. But if you're dealing with people who are communists or people who are unreasonable, then you are not dealing with someone who views 100 million deaths as a negative. They'll say, that's a good start. We Remem should add to that. Remember when that woman posted, people often say socialism doesn't work, but whenever you fail, you got to try, try again. Uh, you know, and then someone commented with, oops, burn the souffle. And it's the it's like the Kim killing fields or something like yeah. that. Right. The killing fields of Cambodia yeah. or uh, I mean, everything in, in communist China, which, well, of course, I've actually Netflix is apparently talking let's, about. Let's we'll, we'll get into the news. We got uh, yeah. Ian. Yo, he's what happened, about everybody? Good to see y'all. Check out the culture war from this morning. If you haven't seen it yet on Tenet Media, it was hot. Rolo, Rolo yeah. Tomasi yeah. and Timothy really Gordon. Yeah, it was Were you on that one cool. this morning? Yeah. Oh, word. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah, I'm Surge.com. Uh, good to have you back, Jack, as always. Uh, let's just get into it. So here's the big news. This uh, major attack in Moscow at the concert hall. Islamic State claims responsibility. Uh, I'm just going to come out right away and say doubt, but okay. The Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the attack on the Moscow concert hall that left at least 40 people killed. I believe you said, uh, Jack, earlier, it's up uh, before the show, it's up to 70 now. I'm I'm seeing 70. Of course, I'll, we should just I'll just do the preface. The, you know your disclaimer that this thing is ongoing. It's happening in real time. The attack happened just a couple hours before we went live here. 
uh, security services we know are going through the center right now. So uh, take everything we say as being within the fog of war. This is a real time situation. It's actually going on. And I believe I'm, wow. I'm even hearing stuff that I look into that say that they're still chasing after some of the terrorists and elements of the Wagner group and even Russian Spetsnaz are up in Moscow trying to go after these guys. Okay. ISIS? I mean, that would seem like a stretch because <laughs> ISIS, um, as everyone knows, was at least in terms of the physical caliphate, was destroyed uh, during the Trump administration. Where we had this, we had this this orange man as president who did very many, who did very very bad things to ISIS, and they went away. Uh, but what people also don't always realize is that ISIS was also fighting Russia in yeah. Syria. So um, certainly would have motive. There's no question about that. Um, it's just been that we haven't really heard from them in years and all of a sudden pop up in the middle of Moscow, right after Putin has this huge victory, right after um, Ukraine got absolutely bombed to the Stone Age last night. Um, I, got a, I got a conspiracy theory. Are there subversives in the caucuses that could be trained up to do something like this? Certainly. But the idea that this has nothing to do with Ukraine is frankly just ludicrous. I think it could be Russia. That's what I was thinking too. The, 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 uh, what, what, is, what would the objective be for Ukraine? What, what is their gain militaristically, strategically of attacking uh, this concert hall? There, there is an obvious one, shock, terror, Yes, you, you, you fight us. We bring this to your home. To you will down on themselves. Yeah. Yes. Not, not, but but also making sure the people of Russia that are supporting it know that this is not something you can hide from. We'll bring it to you. There's also the uh, I believe that's the most likely the the slightly uh, or, or a, a bit less likely, but still very probable is Russia doing it to itself because it could they, they could then point the finger at anybody they want. I suppose, and I've, I've heard like Malcolm Nance said that and some other people, but <laughs> it's, you know. Oh, he's a conspiracy theorist now, huh? And I, and no, he's always been a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> he's um, a clown. That, no, I mean, he can he can track artillery pieces and shells flying overhead. I've never seen a fast mover before. They oh, come in God. threes. And it's like, he's oh, there's so number bad. four. Oops. Um, <laughs> but so the idea being that, you know, if you're Russia and you're Putin right now, you're saying that we defeated the Ukrainian counteroffensive. I've just been reelected and he's he's claiming victory and not to get into the whole. Uh, by the way, I love how they say, well, there's statistical anomalies in Putin's election. I'm like, oh, really? So statistical anomalies are allowed to be <laughs> yeah. uh, a verifier for whether or not an election is legitimate or not. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder if there's any other countries we can apply that to. Um, but Putin wants to, to project strength right now. And the worst possible thing for projecting strength would be showing that you're your capital can be attacked and that your people can be uh, just merc. I don't know if we've played any of the videos yet. We were just watching them, but um, I don't even know if YouTube I don't, I don't, will. Yeah, I don't think we can uh, play. The, I mean, look. Some of this stuff, because it's not censored yet or anything. Merciless videos that I don't think we can this play. Is, this is similar to, Phil, you and I were talking before. It's it's similar to Bataclan uh, yep. in, in uh, I think it was November of 2015 or so yep. in Paris. And... I mean, and the, but the only the difference being there's more powerful social media now, and so you can actually see videos from inside as people were posting them online of these uh, machine gun wielding uh, assailants, militants walking around and just slaughtering people, forcing people into a corner, and stop yeah. me if I'm going too far, but you know, no, no, forcing no. people into a corner and uh, for YouTube, I mean, and um, just just gunning them all down. Um, yep. And these the, the, again, these are innocent civilians at a concert hall. So of course, the United States very quickly had to say, we don't think Ukraine had anything to do with this. Um, you know, fastest investigation in world history, by the way, faster than the Jeffrey Epstein investigation, as a matter of fact. And they they have to do this because if there's even a whiff of the CIA being involved in this, then that means all of our taxpayer dollars going to fund Ukraine, going to fund this war, just funded that attack that you just saw. And keep in mind, that and I, there's this clip that Alex Jones just posted when I was on Infowars at, at the beginning of March, saying that there are going to be terrorist attacks coming in Moscow. We and, actually we and have that's, the, that this phase of the war, that the war was moving into a new phase, an insurgency phase. We have the uh, article actually right here from National Review. State Department warns of imminent terror attack in Moscow. Warns America to avoid crowds from March eighth. I mean that's wild. Well, I mean, look, there's one thing that I want to say about this. Like the United States has had and clearly still does have the most advanced and the most comprehensive uh, surveillance apparatus in human history. So 
just because they got wind of something doesn't mean that they were planning something or they were involved in oh, funding. No. Of course. So no, and, but but there have been terror attacks, uh, not to this scale in Moscow. There have been the drone yeah. strikes. So for the U.S. to warn, well, the and Dar Dar Daria, Daria Dugina. So, oh right, so exactly. Dugan, Dugan's daughter was car bombed yep. in an assassination that you know it's it's questionable. So Alexander Dugan, for people who don't know, is like this this high you know high profile. Um, writer, political theorist, et cetera, uh, within Russia and outside. And people have called him like, and it's you know debatable whether this is true, but they've called him Putin's brain and he's very ideological and has called for a mass, you know, re revamping and reordering of all the Russian speaking peoples into one country. And they said that, you know, this is kind of similar to where, where Putin gets some of these ideas that he, that he espoused on Tucker. And uh, so that, anyway, they, they, blew up his car, but his daughter happened to be driving it. And so people aren't sure if they were targeting him mm -hmm. or targeting her. Obviously, a very, high, very, very high level attack. Um, it was carried out with precision in Moscow, um, more than likely by Ukrainian intelligence. Um, certainly, you mean I US would say at this point, with U.S. intelligence yeah. backing the same way as Nord Stream 2. And the idea that, look, we just had the New York Times article at the beginning of March that predicated all of this, which is before I went on InfoWars and, and made my prediction before the State Department came out. And Phil specifically said concerts specifically yes. used the word concerts within 48 hours uh the warning uh, did the warning did wow. specifically the word concerts and said extremists are targeting public gatherings including concerts wow. so mm -hmm. they specifically use the word concerts and uh we had that New York Times article that said the CIA has spent a decade building a dozen bases across the borderlands of Ukraine and Russia, which is funny because the word Ukraine means borderland uh, itself. And and specifically that they were training up this guy, uh, Kirill Budinov, who has just been appointed the head of Ukraine's intelligence services. And at the time they were talking about maybe put, positioning him as the head of all of Ukraine's intelligence services. This is the CIA's man in Kiev. And so that all happens. Victoria Newland all of a sudden just suddenly like disappears from the scene. And I said, look, it's very clear what's going on. They're going to move into the insurgency phase of this. They understand that they're going to be losing uh, at least the four oblasts that they've already yep. lost, probably or at, the, at, at this point. Well, I'll, you know, going back at this point, definitely four more. And at, given what we've seen and this level of atrocity now, if if Putin believes that Ukraine had even a whiff of involvement of this, I mean, I wouldn't be I want to be anywhere near Zelensky right now. That yeah, but but is, also is right in the bunker. Does it even matter if they do or do not? Russia, uh, Russia, Vladimir Putin must operate under the assumption it was Ukraine. There, there's there's no other assumption. I'll to say make. everyone in Russia, the perception wise, is going to blame this on Ukraine yep. and the United States, yeah, it, and so is everyone in China, and so is everyone in the global South, and so is pretty much anyone who's looking at this thing. No, so like, nobody's going to say this is like as it comes to war. I often say it doesn't matter what's true. Clearly, the truth matters to a great degree for history and policy. But in terms of what escalates conflict, I mean, it could be a, it could be the plum truth that a bunch of ISIS radicals did this. But it doesn't matter because you have an entire nation that's going to be who's our enemy, who stands to gain. Why would we be attacked? And we're the enemy right now. How did World War One start? Yeah. You know, it, it was so sure it was. A, a Serbian nationalist assassinating the heir to the Habsburg Empire. So the heir of the Habsburgs, the heir to Austria-Hungary. But then that triggers, so that triggers a war with Russia, which triggers a war with France. And everybody knows how all the alliances worked out. It's Man. it's about the domino effect. I even forgot to mention in the opening that Kate Middleton came out and said she had cancer. I mean, like, That's this really is sad. a wild day. Really sad. Wild, yeah. wild day. I You know, the the, the situation going on in, in Russia, it, it speaks to what we've all, you know, been discussing for the past, well, for the past year since since the uh, invasion started, which is you don't know what is going to happen that would escalate. And I, I don't see how Russia doesn't look at this as, you know, an attack on on them from the Ukraine. Every everybody knows that they're going to try and escalate. So it's just a matter of what does Putin get out of. Uh, you know, or what? What does he want to target in in Ukraine? Because he's gonna, he's got all the excuse he needs now. So whatever, whatever idea that he may have had in his head that he was like, wait, but maybe I can do this or maybe I can't do that. When it comes to doing some kind of decisive move to end, in, in, in the hopes of ending the Russian war, he's got all the excuse that he ha that he could possibly want right now. Well, and 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 remember too that 
in Russia and the way they view the conflict and the way most Russians view the conflict is not necessarily, they're, they're not like, it's not like they hate Ukraine and they just want to destroy Ukraine, right? They view this as a, an existential war with the collective West. So they view that the West has declared war on them. And this is what Putin was essentially trying to get across to Tucker. And when Tucker says, why did you invade Ukraine? And his response was, well, from our perspective, we were invaded. Yeah. And now what do you have in France? You have Macron going out there and saying, we're going to send thousands of troops from France into uh, into Western Ukraine. You've heard the new Polish president, the new globalist Polish president, Donald Tusk, saying that he's going to do the similar um, with Polish troops. And so what you're really looking at now is a Syrianization of the conflict. And I, I laid all this out a while back. Uh, and if you look at Syria and how the Syrian um, civil war played out, and it's amazing, like even ISIS is showing up, right? So I said there would be a Syrianization of the conflict where, wherein the government controls part of the country. Then there's another part of the country that's controlled by quote unquote separatist groups. You'll see terrorist attacks all over the place. Russia com will come in and stabilize some areas. Um, and then you'll just see little pockets of American and Western troops coming in to quote unquote stabilize various areas. And I laid this out an entire month ago and that's exactly what we're seeing play out here. So we're gonna see a frozen conflict. We don't know exactly where that line is going to be drawn at this point, but I would be very surprised, uh, given, the, the, given the ferocity and brutality of this attack, I'd be very surprised if Putin would be interested in, in, in allowing the, the current regime to stay in power in, in Kiev. You know, we were having that uh, solar eclipse on the 8th. Yes, very excited. And there was the other solar eclipse back in October, which draws an X right over Eagle Pass. <laughs> and, uh, I saw people talking about And I don't, I don't know how much of it is true, but people are saying, like uh, someone mentioned on the show, that the eclipse is going to travel through like five different cities named Nineveh. Oh, uh, Nineveh. <laughs> Nineveh. Oh, Nineveh, yeah, yeah. yeah, wow. They, what is they, that? They misspoke, but Nineveh was like a, it's a <clears throat> the story in the Bible. They talk a lot about the city of Nineveh. I think it was in- That's uh, where Jonah Iraq. was supposed to go. Really? Yeah, joining the whale. He was, he is was that to true? Go, the eclipse is going Nineveh. over that city? Someone said it goes, it went over five cities called Nineveh, but they misspoke and they meant to say Nineveh. Nineveh. I haven't double checked though. I haven't checked. Oh man, I, I just, I'm like, I don't know that I can believe any of this stuff, but uh, I actually had a couple people ask me who are normies totally just they were like do you think there's even an election if like a war breaks out like somebody who doesn't pay attention to politics but knows enough that this stuff's going on in russia ukraine is real question so often yeah like do you yeah. think we even have an, i'm like well wow. ukraine already canceled theirs so right here's here's another big thing that, that's coming up Zelensky's term so Zelensky's term because he's the president is supposed to end is actually set to end two months from today essentially it's like the end of end of May, like May 21st, May 22nd. So the question then is, if he's the he's only the legal president until the end of May, then if Russia wanted to conduct an operation against this guy, they could easily say he's not a legitimate president yeah. because his term ended and he's ruling by fiat well, and military action. Well, so here's an honest question. Um, with several oblasts in Ukraine already outside of Ukrainian control, they cannot hold a, a an election. They can hold an election in the, in the territories they control, but certainly not in the Donbass region. Some people- Well, uh, they already weren't. Before the control of the Russians? Before 2022, they were in national elections, didn't include Kiev or the, oh, okay, the separatist then. areas. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't include Kiev? Oh, excuse me, not Kiev, Crimea. Crimea, right, right. Well, obviously not Crimea since 2014 right. or whatever, but the, the Donbass was not included. Correct. Okay, fair point. The The argument made by many on the left is like, how do you have an election when you've lost territory in a, in a war, uh, plainly, as they've already done, apparently? Yeah, I mean, it, it would be, and it'd be interesting, too, because Zelensky has a lot of uh, deep-seated um, opposition within his own country. There are people who said that he hasn't conducted the war well. There are people who have pointed out, to, and, and the, the average Ukrainian doesn't actually know how many people were killed in the counteroffensive. Uh, they have no clue. They're, just, they're totally psyoping everybody about how many people they lost and how many casualties they took in that ridiculous, uh, that ridiculous, just throwing people against the Russian lines. And um, so you've got um, Petro Poroshenko, the previous president who ran against Zelensky in, um, in his first election in 2018. You've got uh, 18 or 19. And you've got um, a lot of people, by the way, like so people don't remember this, but Zelensky was actually very unpopular before the war started um, because of the lockdowns. <laughs> It's oh, like wow. this, like totally separate. Oh yeah, remember that? It's like it's like on the previous season, um, and there were protests in Maidan Square against Zelensky because they thought he was too harsh on the lockdown policies and he was pushing the vaccines too much, and um, you know, foreshadowing. 
And then it was sort of this like Avengers bearded Zelensky that comes out in the face <laughs> of the war who gets this this huge uh, row of support. But then as the war's gone gone south, just like has happened in many, many situations, like, I don't know, South Vietnam, for example, uh, the leader who we thought was the stalwart um, defender of freedom is now viewed as kind of like a loser, kind of pathetic, saying you can't beat, a, you can't win on the battlefield. We need somebody fresh in there. And, and problem with that is, you know, you make, you make those deals with the CIA, CIA puts you on an early retirement plan pretty quick. Yeah. I just had a, uh, totally normal person just say so something came up about the Red Sea trading and like China and then sure jumped right to, and then when the war starts, they won't have elections and then you don't got to worry about Biden or Trump. And I was like, oh man, maybe that's, you know, we keep talking about What's the Democrat plan for Joe Biden? He's not popular. They don't got anything. Yeah, it could be. How can we have an election when, you know, we're currently under attack? Or the worst part of it, and, and this is something that even uh, Neil Howe got into in Fourth Turning, is that the new version of it was that if if a war starts and then there's a provocation in the U.S. or Ukraine or somewhere in Europe, and somehow it gets blamed on Trump and it gets like blamed on MAGA and somehow there's some connection to Trump. Then all of a sudden it's like you're on the side of Hitler, man. Well, let's uh, we'll do a hard segue into American domestic issues because this is very big news from earlier today. Ben Shapiro's The Daily Wire severs ties with Candace Owens after her embrace of anti-Semitic rhetoric. I love the headline from the corporate press on all of these things. Jeremy Boring, co-CEO of Daily Wire, simply said that Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their business relationship. It was very fairly professional. As far as I know, Candace did also just said, here's my YouTube channel. Thank you. Everybody runs wild with speculation. And you can't, you, 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 you can't help it, can you, CNN? They had to make sure they put Ben Shapiro's name in it. They want to make sure they get those clicks. And they had to include anti-Semitic rhetoric. Okay. I don't well, know. it's Oliver Darcy, so. I know, I know, of course. But I, to be fair, there's like four or five other corporate press outlets that did the exact same thing. Yep. So what we know is that she is no longer with the Daily Wire. There are many people that are suggesting the issue was she had made comments critical of Israel and she was critical of certain Jewish individuals pertaining to Christianity versus Judaism. However, I don't know that any of that plays a role, to be completely honest. I think her contract was likely coming to an end and she's yeah. she disagrees with them there's an it 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 really is much simpler we know for a fact that Ben and Candace disagree on a lot of things i don't think that's grounds for them to be like we're no longer going to work with you ever again but if they both were kind of like maybe we shouldn't work together that's just it yeah she tweeted out that she's free that was part of her tweet so she obviously felt trapped there um, wow. up until today and she and ben had that falling out i don't know four or five months ago i wasn't here and i didn't talk about it but i i saw they had a miscommunication and it was and then they kind of neither of them realized what was going on and then all of a sudden it blew up into this big fight and then they stopped talking to each other and then she doesn't have one mention his name and she probably wanted out she probably went to the guys and was like triple my salary new contract and they were like no and she's like all right i'm done I don't think she, I, I doubt she probably asked for a I, lot more money. I, I bet she wanted like a huge raise because she was really unhappy is my guess. Or she didn't even ask for anything and she just left one of the two. I, I, I'm assuming Candace is, she's already successful and wealthy and she doesn't need the yeah, money from them. She's going to be great. If it's an issue of freedom and you've got someone who's a millionaire there, you it's, it's impossible to buy freedom. Yeah, she should start her own but network, CandaceOwens.com. But I do want to point this got. out. Is that right? Uh, uh, Christy Neville's on Twitter. I'm not sure who this is. Uh, took a screenshot showing that episodes 299 and 301 of the Candace Owens show have been removed, saying that both were about Bridget McCrone. And if you head over to Apple Podcasts, you can see that the episode from March 13th, I believe is what we're looking at. Uh, no, no, there's no one. So what is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. March 13th is not there. So it goes 12 to 14, 300 to 302. And it goes March 7th to 12th. There's no 299. So there's no... Uh, but there is uh, a March 8th shot in the dark. So I, I don't know for sure, but it, it looks like one of the one of the key issues may have been coming out and saying that Emmanuel Macron's wife, Bridget Macron, is a man and I'll stake my career on it. I have to assume that the Daily Wire immediately got a lawsuit threat because that's how these things work. We've received threats of lawsuits now, many people, uh, there's a lot of people who are like, no, no, Israel. And they're, they're saying it's because she was critical of Israel or whatever. Yeah, it's entirely possible, you know, considering, you know, Ben Shapiro is much more invested for obvious and that, reasons. 
By the way, that, and I, I haven't even looked into it, but that would potentially be under French law. What, uh, elaborate? So defamation laws, as most people know in the U.S., is extremely loose. It's, 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 and even more so for public, uh, in individuals, public figures, so they say. Uh, this came up with Nick Salmon, of course, because Nick Salmon was a private individual uh, who was defamed as opposed to a public individual. Um, this did not come up, for example, by, for Kyle Rittenhouse because they claim that Kyle Rittenhouse was named in the arrest warrant. And mm. so when he was named in that capacity, figure. that made him a public figure. Mm. So that being said, in the EU, the the lies are the the laws. Oh, yeah. The laws are much much stricter, and I've seen people try to do this. They call it um they call it uh what is it like like yo I think, I'm sorry I just tourism it out. lawsuits in the UK where people try to de- have like tried to do this in the UK and it doesn't work. But if France were going to bring it, it could be pretty rough. I think I just figured it out. I just figured it out. You so. figured it out. Candace Owens goes to the guys at the Daily Wire and says, "I want more money," and they said, "No." And she goes, contract negotiation. They go, contract negotiation. She says, it's not working for me. They're like, well, too bad you're in a contract. And she goes, oh, yeah? So she goes on her show and goes, Bridget McCrone is a man. Uh, and then they're like, ah! Uh, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, okay, we get it. We get it. You're out of your contract. Leave us alone. That, that did <laughs> kind of come out of nowhere. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm hard. thinking, like, what is she? Could it be that she came out with those episodes saying, I will stake my career on Bridget McCormick being a man because it put the liability on the Daily Wire, which she would not absorb. And so they're like, okay, okay, okay. Which I'm sure if she said it on the show, it would come <laughs> under. But as far as I know, Candace, she has integrity. So I don't think she would say something she didn't believe. I So I, I, I tend yeah, to Yeah, I'm with really you on that. I don't, yeah. I don't think Candace would. It came out of nowhere though. You I know don't I mean? think Candace just knowing her would <laughs> would do something like she didn't strike me as the kind of person. and people are like oh does candace hate this person or that person and i don't think she's I agree. like that i, I, agree. I just that, really don't think she's like she's that at all she's a very good person that, right she's like, like a really funny actor that is stuck in a political realm like if the world were very healthy she'd be like an actor i feel like but, she's just got that uh, like lightheartedness to her that, that's why when everyone's she's like oh it's actor. because of this thing or that thing i was like when i actually sat down when i, when I met candace when i went on her show the first time i was deeply impressed uh like it was it was it was legit it was genuine she knew what she was talking about she did the research her logic was sound i actually agree with her on a lot of things i was like oh wow she knows exactly what she's talking about and then before during and after the show it was all completely genuine and real and i i truly believe she believed what she was saying so i, I it, it would be funny if she was having like tough negotiations with the daily wire and they were like candace you have, an, you have another year in your contract you can't leave and she goes then i will make it not worth it for you that would be funny, but yeah, it's probably not not the case. But that means she also deeply believes that Bridget McCone is a man, and I I don't think that's correct. But you oh, know, we did a bit on this on the Unusual Suspects with Vinny O'Shana at the Valuetainment like a couple weeks ago about Bridget, and I don't want to do a whole Bridget McCone segment no. unless you guys want to, but it's uh pretty wild. Have you looked into it at all? I oh, the the glancing look I gave into it was something that like they couldn't find pictures of when she was younger. Um, they're kept in the same place as Epstein's black book and the Michelle Obama <laughs> pregnancy photos. Everyone <laughs> has transes on the brain. Yeah. Yeah. When I was told is that it really like wait, wait. like everybody it's 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 this like you, thing where people are just constantly thinking like, like the transvestigators are on the yes. prowl. Transvestigators, you know? I love that. I was gonna say, do you remember the transvestigators? Yes. It was leftists and they were like taking pictures of women and being like, This is actually a man and yeah. here's why. And I'm like it's funny because that's like the meanest thing to say to a woman. It There's really like, is. It's but like, no, it's actually the nicest thing to say. So what you want to do, what you could do to- I don't know, like, man, Lizzo's beautiful, you apparently. Could go, you could go on, like, there was a 4chan post of this guy saying that he goes on, you, you see what I'm talking about? No. Where he goes and says, oh, I, I've been dating these, um, these liberal women that I'll meet with on dating apps on purpose, and I'll go out with them. And after, like, the first couple of dates, I'll be like, that's really cool that you're, you know, that- um, you know, not only that uh, you've been so you've been so open about your transition, but you you know you really pass, you really pass, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that it just drives them completely nuts. And he was like, "I've done this to seven women now." <laughs> they can't get mad about it. They can just be like, "Oh no, I'm not." And you'd be like, "Oh really? Oh, not allowed?" Because I thought we were. Wasn't that there was a Seinfeld episode about that where um, 
Elaine was dating a guy and she thought he was black. And then he thought she was, I think he thought she was either Jewish or, or maybe also black. I forget what it was. And he's like, but your name is Bennis. Um, and at the end they're like, so wait, so we're just a couple of white people. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, yeah, I guess we are. What do we do? I don't know. Do you, do you want to go to the gap? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Macron things. I don't really want to talk. I don't know anything about it or if it's real. And it's insane to me to think that a world leader is married to a 25, someone that's 25 years older than him. That is transsexual or trans. The age trans thing sexual. is already weird enough. Yeah, yeah. The age he, thing is already weird enough. The story goes that he was sixteen and he met this his his future wife in school. That she was his teacher at the time or something like that. I don't know. Like That's about up, as far as I'm going to go. Feels like can straight I, up grooming. Can I? Just, I, I got to. I got to read this paragraph. <laughs> Oliver Darcy is such a scumbag. He wrote, but since the October seventh Hamas terror attack on Israel, Owens has repeatedly waded into anti-Semitic waters. Now, now, hold on. What could she have possibly said that was so anti-Semitic right. as she fiercely criticized Israel? What? That's a country. Suggesting the Jewish government was committing genocide in Gaza and claiming there's a sinister small ring of Jewish people in Hollywood and D.C. involved in something quite sinister. If you want to separate those two statements, I'd, I'd accept that. People are allowed to criticize Israel over their military actions. You, you, know, who else, you know who else criticizes Israel and accuses Israel of genocide? Other Jewish people all the time. Like go go look on Twitter. Go look on go spend five seconds on TikTok. You'll find some. Really I just I just love that it's like Candace Owens has criticized Israel's military operations. She is wading into anti Semitism. It's like, dude, just spare me with that stuff. Come on, man. Yeah. That's like but some that's, straight that's up Iraq yeah. war kind right, of. Right, I know. Like I mean, look, also crap. you have to remember, like it, the, the Israel Gaza thing is like Schrodinger's bigot. Like if you <laughs> if you support Gaza, then you're anti Semitic. If you support Israel, then it's because you hate the Muslims. Either way, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So they can't just write, we don't have comment from them on why the separation. And just end it with a single paragraph because Oliver Darcy is a scumbag grifter. So let me just explain. He puts Ben Shapiro's name in the title because it gets clicks because they know that when do people do a keyword search, this article would pop up instead of just putting the Daily Wire, which is a corporation for which Ben Shapiro is involved. He could have wrote Jeremy Boring's The Daily Wire. He's the co-CEO. Now they have to they have to milk as much out of it as possible. I don't know if you guys saw that uh, tweet from Alex Jones. He said that uh, Israel is committing a robotic genocide. Yes, this is. It was a video of robotic. drones dropping oh, bombings, yeah, drones. like civilians walking. What it looks like four just dudes. And we got to be careful on that one. Yeah, you said civilians. no one knows we what it is. We don't know what it is. It's it's four men, like young, younger looking men walking, and then it, it's you see it from the drones' perspective. It's apparently leaked footage from a drone. Drone is really drones. drones. What's that? Is what first person view drones? Yeah, and I don't think it's it's not it's I, I don't believe the video footage is coming from a drone that actually uh, like a Reaper drone or anything. I think it's coming from uh, uh, observation a, or something. Yeah, small uh, uh, quad rotor. Well, they're walking along and then drone. pop explosion. There's nothing to you be, can actually just dissipated. They're like disintegrated, and then you see that. But then you still see like one guy walking. I don't know if they're picking off stragglers. If they hit the group of them, they and hit then, the group, and one guy survives. Starts walking forward. At a brisk pace, and then you can actually see the missiles come down in the and video. Whatever Alex Jones, it 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 broke him. That that was his moment where he was like, "It's they've gone too far." And and you know, I watch a video like that, and I certainly, I think it raises like a probable cause question degree of like a preponderance of evidence to where we're like, this is th this has to be reviewed. There has to be a hearing. Well, however, I'm very careful in that I'm not going to watch a 30 second video and say I know what's happening. I just can't do that. Well, the but I can certainly take issue is that the, the drone war has always been like this. Right. The drone war has literally almost like almost to a T. You, OK, you know, the Soleimani strike. Fine. Right. You know who's in the car, but that's a very, that's a one off. Uh, there are so many times where things have, have happened. If you go look at the conduct of this, um, that U.S. intelligence services, and I'm talking about America here, obviously, um, but now everybody's got drone tech, right? So it used to just be that America would be doing this thing, go into Waziristan and in Pakistan, or they'd go throughout Afghanistan and, oh, we're going to, you know, hit this place. We're going to hit that place. And, oh yeah, we, we see what, it, we see what's right there on the camera. Those are the bad guys. Let's, let's go blow them up. But a lot of the times, either you don't know what it is, you don't know what the collateral is, you don't know what the situation is uh, as much. And it, to your point, the probable cause, it's always been that way. There's a great Ethan Hawke movie about it that not, not a lot of people have seen. I'm just saying I try to take the, uh, you know, a, a, the fence sitter approach to this. And I think for Alex to Tim come Poole, out. Tim Pool, a fence sitter? Oh, certainly. Never. Never. But to, you know, so it's like 
I, I immediately saw it and I, I wanted to hit retweet and comment and be like, what the? And so my thought was, we need like proper adjudication on what this is and why it happened. And they, I think Israel should be, should be like, we should, we should demand, especially with this, this minibus they just passed massive funding for Israel. They should have to justify what that was, provide evidence. Cause it certainly does look like they just blew up a couple civilians. That, United, that's that's the video that that came out and that's the reporting we're seeing and and they should answer for it the american people have every right to question congress and have congress explain where they're sending their money and and what congress is doing in support of other nations that being said um i like and i don't want to see u.s money going to anyone i don't want to see uh, american dollars going to any foreign aid Agreed. i think that it incentivizes bad behavior um so full stop on that as for what Israel is doing or what that particular uh, thing looked like, I don't know anything about the people that were in there, but that's just what war is. And people that are saying, you know, talking about disproportionate response and stuff, the proportionate response is getting Hamas. Like, that's the proportion, getting the people that carried out the attack. You can dislike that and say that you don't want that. Cool. And that's a completely legitimate position to have. But people that say it's disproportionate because they've killed there's, too many people, that's not going to, that's, that's not how, that's not how military actions work. And, and I'm, I'm of the mind that of Scott Adams, when it, when it comes to this, Israel's going to do what Israel's going to do. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what, what any of us say. And to be honest with you, the people that live in Gaza and in Israel, the only people that actually, it really matters to directly. There, there is no such thing as proportional response that is a made up term. Yeah, that's you. That's what I'm saying. I'm like people that talk about proportional response. A proportional response is make believe. What you do is you set a military goal and then you continue to conduct military actions until you have achieved your military goal. The military goal that that the that Israelis have set is the destruction of Hamas. You can it doesn't matter if you like it and I'm not saying you have to like it. I'm talking about the reality on the ground there. I just want to say I think for all the people in the United States and and those who uh, would watch this show or not, uh, we're all in agreement we shouldn't be sending money over there. And if your justification is you think it's a genocide or whatever, I honestly don't care. Because if the only thing we agree on is the U.S. shouldn't be spending money on, on these foreign wars and, and funding anything, then we need not argue the morality of anything going on. That's a waste of all of our time when you and I can say, oh, wait, 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 before we argue, how about we just say Congress shouldn't send money to them or any other country? You agree. OK, yeah. we're good. We're good. Let's just we'll, we, we there, there argue also, morality somewhere else. There are also tons of conflicts going on in the world at, at any given time. Yeah. Uh, there are conflicts going on in Southeast Asia. There are conflicts going on in Africa. Uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia had um, you, Azerbaijan ethnically cleanse um like 100,000 Armenians last year from this one area of Artsakh, and nobody even talked about it. Um, and so I, I do think with a lot of this, you, you also have to wonder that is there a financial incentive when the U.S. government is sending that money abroad? Because, and, and we know this from Ukraine, right? How much of that money makes it back to those American congressmen in many cases, or the companies and military financial instruments in which fund those congressmen. And so that's it's it, you have to point out that this is exactly why there are certain conflicts that get so much attention inside the US and others that just aren't even talked about. Let's uh, let's jump to this story, which uh, involves a, I believe it was a, it was a massive uh, funding bill that uh, uh, it was one point two trillion dollar spending bill of which uh, four was it four billion that went to uh, Israel. I'm not entirely sure. I want to make sure we fact check this one. But uh, this is fascinating because more Democrats voted for it than Republicans. And it has led to Marjorie Taylor Greene filing a motion to oust Speaker Mike Johnson over the deal. A one point two trillion dollar spending bill they call the mini bus was released overnight in the wee hours of the morning. That nobody gets to read. And Mike Johnson said, no, nah, it's fine. It's fine. Democrats were like, we like what you're doing, Mike Johnson. And so uh, Matt Gates is now saying uh, this may be the end of Republicans having control in Congress. It may become a Democrat Speaker of the House after Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, files to oust Mike Johnson. I just, I just I just love the complete and utter disarray and ineptitude of the Republican Party. Uh, I don't blame Marjorie Taylor Greene at all. Actually, I am fine with her filing to vacate um, Mike Johnson. And I agree with Matt Gates. but I just don't see if we're not. It's better that a Democrat actually is running the show than someone pretending to be a Repu Republican. At least we can then be the opposition party, right? So the 
the American people are starting to see now that the politicians in Washington, D.C. represent other interests than their own constituents, that there are other things at play. N none of this was popular. None of these things were popular to some of the direct uh, groups that are getting money, all the amount of earmarks, the amount of pork in there. Sure. The locals will say, oh, yeah, my guy got this done. My guy got that done. You know, John Fetterman's like sending money to a podcast or something. But by and large, the huge amounts of spending, no, it's not popular. So why is it that then certain people just go along with it? Well, that's why they're selected for leadership. That's why those people mm -hmm. are able to get into those positions. And then you have people like the Freedom Caucus. You have people in the Senate like Mike Lee and others who are calling it out. Rand Paul for years and years and years and nothing ever changes because calling it out doesn't matter. Because, again, just like I was saying that, like, you know, arguing with, you know, far communists is never going to get you anywhere. You have to use reciprocity that arguing with these guys, this establishment saying that, oh, you know, this, this isn't good for financial sense for us. This isn't good for the constituency. This isn't good for the country. They don't care. They're not there to represent you. They're there to represent their special interests. That's four, how they get leadership. Four billion dollars in military aid sent to Israel in this in this bill. How did we go from a bill that was going to send 14 million? I believe it was right. Was it 14 million or no, it was a billion. No, wait, what was it? That, that, I think it was uh, always in the billions. It was always in the billions. That yeah. that that uh, the the border bill. It was fourteen billion. Well, and the border is barely. Is even, that what it was though? And the border itself is barely even funded in this bill. And it definitely no, 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 right, right, right. But, but we had that bill that was mostly Ukraine money. Yeah, it was like was it, it was, sixty it billion? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The bill where the McConnell one, where they were combining right. the and now the border and after yeah, all of the right. bickering and fighting and refusal and everything, they just past this stuff overnight. There's no country anymore, man. No, I think what's happening is that we have been in World War III since 9-11, and it's a slow war. They don't want to declare it. They don't want to tell you, but they're just at war, and they are moving like they're at war, and so anyone that complains, no, no, they're just going to ignore the it because we're at war. We're in the we, looting we, bro, phase. Bro, we, we've, we've been at war since forever i mean the korean mm -hmm. war vietnam the patriot act uh, and, and, turned it, us but it's but it, it, it it, it the patriot act did a lot but what did the patriot act do that you're concerned about well it made made americans fear that they could be squashed by their government how? if they speak out against them how because like, what, 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 what specifically in the bill are you concerned about um like warrantless spy or spying and things like that there's there's no warrantless spying uh, there's lots of it. They ju they 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 claimed they were, they were never warrantless spying. The issue is not, in my opinion, the Patriot Act. There's a lot of bad things in it, of course. The issue is that the United States has been at war constantly, nonstop. We had we had uh, Desert Storm in the early '90s. Oh, I know. It's not just 9/11. They've been doing this. 9-11 changed so much changed after 9-11 the, the Homeland Security, all these departments. Homeland got built. Security for sure through the Patriot Act. Yeah, so so much weird stuff got got put into put into place and just pushed after that in the two years after 9-11 it's fair to say that 9-11 did change the world because i don't think because i think that it's clear that it did um but i think that the surveillance state that we live under now it was it was baked in the cake with the the information revolution right like whether or not 9-11 happened the iphone was still going to come out and the iPhone, the smartphone, the computer and social media in everyone's pocket with a microphone and a camera on it, that's what changed the whole, that's what changed security state and the, and it changed the, the military industrial complex. It, 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 it made social media and information technology a part of the military industrial complex. And so it, made, it made everybody a, a, a node essentially in that security apparatus. Yeah. So what you're talking about is essentially low intensity conflict. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, this is a great example of, so this is kind of what we talk about, because there's this question that we get into in the book about what what would you call the what we're experiencing right now? And people have tried alternately to call it a cultural revolution. They'll say, well, wait a minute, but it's not like China because people aren't like marching in the streets. But just because it's not like China doesn't mean that it's not a cultural revolution. Well, I think I, that, go ahead. I, I'm, 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 sure, leading, sure, sure. I'm leading up to it. Sure, no, no, no. Sure. And, 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 and that's correct. That's exactly right. Because we can see elements. We see the struggle sessions. We can see all of these things going on that are very similar to what happened in the Chinese cultural Pulling revolution. Pulling down of, of statues. The iconoclasms. Yeah, sure. It's similar to the Bolshevik revolution. It's similar to the French revolution. We go through all of these and pull it out. And, and what we've actually determined is that 
in the same way, and it's it's amazing that you mentioned technology because it's exactly right. The same way that technology has transformed kinetic warfare, it's also transformed these revolutions that we're in. And so what we actually describe is that it's essentially, it's a low intensity conflict. Um, it's an irregular revolution. And within that irregular revolution, there are multiple micro revolutions going on all the time. And micro revolutions are essentially miniature revolutions that can be like within, you know, 5GW irregular revolutions, I can launch a micro revolution at Tim Pool because he says something at, you know, on one of his shows or a micro revolution can get launched against me because I give a speech at CPAC. And suddenly it's this tactic that goes on and on. And if the person falls for it, if the person, you know, breaks down, then they lose and they go out. And so it's this idea that the new technology has created a new warfare. This has already been turned into political irregular revolutionary warfare and that's what we're living through because it's like you can't just you like you you walk down the street right and people are saying oh, we're not in a civil war we're not in a you know everything's fine you can kind of go around but if you if you what if you walk down the street and i do this a lot i just do it on periscope yesterday down at the uh, jefferson memorial and i was just walking around going hey trump won <laughs> hey so trump won you know, and they would say, oh, well, uh, you know, it's starting to get dark. That's right. It is getting dark in America under this illegitimate president because Trump won. And so the point being is, and then you see the reactions from people, they get really upset. Yeah. And because you're not allowed to have that opinion. Mm -hmm. So if you say an opinion you're not allowed to say, well, what what's the word for that? And so the phraseology we're trying to come up with it here is that it's essentially an irregular revolution. It is a thought revolution and all these other things. That's what we're in. I used to call it a revolution of the mind, and I was very excited for it. In 2006, six seven. I was like, we are entering a new era of digital technology communication where presidents can communicate across the planet without secret service needed via video chat, and the whole world can watch them communicate. Time for a revolution of thought. But then I realized that's what Mao said, a revolution of the mind. The it exact is. same words exactly. as what I was spouting out. Let but Kenny, my question is, the stuff, dude, the, the number of phrases that Americans utter that actually are directly translated to, ch to Chinese that were used in communist China. If people knew how many, they, how how frequently they're saying that stuff, they would blow their mind. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. There's right. one. There's one in the uh, in the trailer for this Netflix thing um, where they're where they're saying "ge ming wu zai," "ge ming wu zai," which means um, it essentially translates to you know the revolution is crimeless. The revolution is sinless. The revolution is perfect. Which is is to say anything done in the name of revolu of the revolution yep. is fine. So you right. can kill people. You can expropriate. You can do anything you want. You can arrest to landlords. That are not exactly to that. You can do anything you want to people that are not members of the party. And nowadays in the United States, we clearly have a the party and not the party. They said and that's the, the way that it is. The revolution will not be televised. That phrase was always bounced around in the 90s, 2000s. I was like, well, well, it's true. The revolution's on the internet. It's but but it's not even about that. Has anyone actually considered what that phrase meant when they were saying it? The revolution will not be televised. It it's means the, that they were committing the acts of rooms. They were committing subversion, subversion. Against, against our institutions. Right. Do you think that there can be no revolution? Because I think there is an attempt at some many many like you're saying sub revolutions within this greater cultural revolution. Can we resist it without another another type of revolution? Yes. Or do we have to have create to our own? No. People have to be aware. The problem that we're facing, the biggest problem that we have right now, is is bad. Democrats, bad liberals, right? They think they're doing things that are liberal. They think they're doing the nice thing, but the nice thing is not always the thing that lines up with liberalism. And when you're a bad liberal, you're doing authoritarian things or supporting authoritarian ideas like censorship, like like using the government against your political enemies, uh, using using uh, basically shock troops to terrify the the population like rioting in the streets and stuff like that like that's all stuff that communists have used historically but the the democrats in the united states first of all aren't aware of communist tactics which is why books like 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 jack's book is are so so important and and it's important for people to read them and people they're not aware of the fact that it's a subversive ideology it is going to hide. It doesn't want to tell the average person that has a mortgage and two kids, hey, we're going to take away your property because you know, that's what you have to do in communist. You have to, but they are. you have to give up your property. You have to arrest landlords. Yeah, they're, completely. They will arrest, yeah, so we're at the arresting landlords phase of the irregular revolution. It's, yeah. it's as you say, so it's, we go through the phases of a communist revolution and a, a communist pre-revolution too, because there's all this pre-revolutionary revolution will not be um, televised stuff that goes on beforehand 
Um, but there's always the inciting motion and then the seizing of whatever it is, the property, the life, et cetera. You know, they, they block out your access to rights. And then finally the purging happens. So either the purging of the person, the arrest, execution, whatever it may be. But the biggest thing that we, we want to get across in this book is that, and, and it, it's to your point, I think it will get there, is that the only answer to any of this, and whether you're a conservative or a moderate or whatever, right, a good liberal, um, is reciprocity. Yep. And conservatives need, the right absolutely needs to learn the word reciprocity. These people are coming for your homes, literally in, in New York City. They're coming for, if you commit wrong think, they'll come for your families. They'll come, they're certainly coming for your children. I, I don't think anyone can argue with me at this point that they're coming for your children. They will take your children away if you disagree with them on certain issues. Um, and so it, they desire to convince your kids only. that they might be trans and then you say, no, you're not. So that way they can say, well, guess what? Those are our kids. Now. Right. And so if you're arguing with somebody who is that committed to their cause is it is it, and, and these causes, of course, attract people who are going to be the most loyal because they, these causes and we get into that in the book as well. Like what what causes a person to be this this envious and angry? It's because because they're life's losers and they would not be able to have any success in life outside of the revolution, outside of the regime, outside of power. That's why you see these like, look at the Biden administration. Like, do I, do I you know, do you think any of those people, Karine Jean-Pierre or uh, was it Admiral Levin or anything would be actually be able to have a successful career in the private sector doing something in the real world? Of course not. Absolutely not. That's why they need to be committed to the revolution. Let's talk about the uh, next phase of their revolution. We have this tweet from Tyler, uh, Taylor, sorry, Taylor Hansen. Can't make this up. I always do that too. On my flight home to DFW to Salt Lake City, I have an illegal immigrant, a former soldier from Venezuela seated next to me on American Air. Every time I fly back to SLC, I have illegal immigrants on my flights. Despite Governor Cox claiming it's not happening, Utah has become the home for over 88,000 illegal immigrants. As you can see in the documents, he is prior military. In another portion of the documents, it details how he came, al came alone despite having a wife and two children. Let's stress this. In these documents, you can see it says that, have you received military training of any type? Yes. <laughs> and that he has a wife and kids, but he left them behind to come to the United States. Why? Why is a Venezuelan with military training leaving his family behind to come to the United States? Because it's an invasion. Be because it's an invasion. Um, the, the, uh, so keep in mind, right? If you're if your revolution is predicated on a coalition of the fringes, and Steve Saylor uh, came up with that quote, so the coalition of the fringes, then in order to stay in power, you must increase the fringes. You must increase the destabilization. You must increase the amount of people in a, a, a government, polity, country, society, whatever you want to call it, that adhere or are at least dependent on you. And so the ability to bring in as many people as possible across the border is not a feature. It is not a a you know unintended consequence. And conservatives need to stop thinking that these are unintended consequences. These are absolutely intended consequences. These are deliberate. The purpose of a system is what it does, and it is not going to stop on its own. You talk about insurgents, the age of insurgency warfare. I mean, we just had what ten million illegal immigrants come across the border. Where are they? Are well, they, are they? Do they have secret groups that no, they're no, planning? Hold on. 10, 10 million is what we had several years ago. What we know about. I mean, how many? And, and that and that doesn't that that's who we know. And then you have millions over the past few years under Biden. And how many of those in Russia in in Moscow? How many shooters were there? Six. Uh, I think there were like three. Three killed what seventy plus it's, people. It's, it, it's hard to say at yeah. this point. So there could have been more, but I mean, well, I mean we're, we're, of course we're, it could. We're, so this, like you said, this, this is only talking so, about like what we know. And there's some that got away. So, sure. I, we, so this, this is what I was talking. Uh, I mentioned I was talking to a, a normie not that long ago, like a couple days ago. And uh, part of it was illegal immigration leading to terror attacks and whether or not that results in some kind of war where then there's no election. I think it, 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 it makes sense as a military commander to have ins insurgents in another country that then will the sleeper cells will awaken and do the damage from within so that the country turns on its own people to try and defend themselves, causes mass chaos. You win without even having to attack. I mean, it's just the best tactic for an invading force, for an enemy force. So that they wouldn't do it here is insane. Obviously, they're going to try and do it here. And what's the very first thing that we do with the illegals when we bring them across? And it's already been, I said this a while ago, that's already very clear. And uh, Taylor and many others have been down there uh, documenting this. We give them airplane tickets. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> we give them airplane. We give them tickets. So they already know 
right? If you're going to put this into your TTPs, so what happens when you cross the border? Well, you know, you get sent to processing, then you have to do some like little woo-woo hearing and, oh, that's fine. Oh, you're, oh, you just say the word asylum and you're good to go basically. And then the very next thing that happens is you get handed an airplane ticket. Now let's say you've got maybe five or six brothers along with you. Oh, guess what? Now you're on an airplane. Yep. Now you have the ability. And oh, look, it, it's it's we don't even need like Muhammad Atta and 9-11 hijackers it, to learn, you know, to sneak in the country. You just walk across. You know, you know, the funny thing is it's so uh, easy. The Patriot Act allows for the uh, I believe I could be wrong, indefinite detention of immigrants as they enter this country. So the issue isn't the, the Patriot Act. Actually, right now it's a they are not using the Patriot Act for one of the purposes people were scared they were going to use it for, which is detaining immigrants as they enter the country. Now, people were saying immigrants. Specifically, I'm talking about the illegal immigrants, of which millions have crossed in the country without being stopped. And there is no mass enforcement against them. There is no iron fist government being like, we're going to take action against these illegal immigrants. None. None at all. And even Donald Trump is only saying, I'm going to enforce the law. It's like, oh, that's all he's going to do. He did and say then, the most massive deportation operation. In yeah, American but history. all he's not he, like all that's saying is like, I am going to engage in a large law enforcement operation to enforce the law. Like you, you can say it ever you want. If Trump came out and said something substantially more egregious, then I think there'd be grounds to criticize him. I think what we end up seeing with a lot of conservatives is they will say they will take a moderate approach to their beliefs, thinking it will win them more friends. And then the Democrats will argue the fringe far left, creating the middle ground of the left. So the compromise between a moderate and a, and, a, and a leftist is going to be a left position. If the right is coming out and saying, at the bare minimum, we will just start enforcing uh, enforcing the law, the left will then say, well, let's compromise on that then. And then the compromise with Democrats in Congress is going to end up being like, we deport only half. The 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 main thing that, and and I, I, we need to get across to conservatives is is the idea of reciprocity. And reciprocity means that anything they do to us, the, the, you know, and, and you see what happens when they come for us, the docs and the swatting that, that we've yeah. both experienced, um, and the, the harassment, the censorship, the cancel culture, it's not going to just stop on its own. And so these, you think people say, and to your point, right? You know, we think, I say, oh, well, we're going to compromise. We're going to do this. This is already the plan that they want that they're putting in place. It's, it's anarcho tyranny. The way isn't that the Patriot Act is not applied to select groups and is applied to others. Yeah, they're going to use it to look at your text how, messages, but they don't care about well, the look, let's talk about How is it that in New York, they, they're arresting the homeowner? How, how is that, how is it that we've come to this point? And is it just a fringe one-off thing? Are we really at the arresting landlords phase? Yes, absolutely. Of, of course, it, every, the, every single time, every, in this book, we, but, but every you, you, single you, you, communist I, I, I revolution know, I know, comes but, to do, do you really believe that in New York City, in 100% of circumstances, when a squatter is at a house, the, the NYPD will show up and arrest the homeowner just like they did. Or do you think that those cops were just communists themselves? Well, I think she broke a law by by changing the locks when they said, don't change the locks. Well, don't do it. And she was right, like, right, okay, right. I'm going to go that, do it that's anyway. That's not my question. Like, ah. My question is, let's say we replicate that scenario in New York 100 times. Squatters go into a house. Homeowner shows up. Squatters can't prove anything. Cops then arrest the homeowner. Does that happen in the majority of cases, do you think, right now? I think over 50%, yes. My I point think is most, we're seeing a system. Yeah. We're seeing a systemized yeah. playbook that's laid out. Look, the, it, but, but, it in, New York City, in New York City, there are, a, there are a lot of actual open communists in city government. Yes. They're community organizers and they're in city government. That is going to spread. This is not, this does not it's stop. It's too black pill for me, man. Brother, it San, is San, happening, San, San, homeboy. I'm, San Francisco will get it. Cues. San like, Francisco oh, really? gets okay. it next. Uh, well, uh, then well, it'll spread to like Madison, Wisconsin, or something. Ian, Chicago. This is but you, so you, dark. you think Madison, Wisconsin? Ian, it's happening. Right, 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 right. You think Madison, Wisconsin police officers? The majority of the time, because it has to be the majority. I mean, fifty percent might even be too light. Like this has to be like typical enforcement. You, you're saying even in, in Madison, Wisconsin, Midwest. Homeowner walks up to the house of squatter there. They call the cops. The cops then say, you can't do anything about it. We'll arrest you if you do. And then it results in homeowners getting arrested. You think that'll happen in Madison? 
I don't. Well, keep in mind, it's not the police saying it. It's it's it's, it's what Phil's saying. It's it's the city government is enforcing, no, 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 requiring but, it to be enforced. If the, if, I'm, I'm specifically asking about the police because if the cops show up and say, "I ain't enforcing that law," ain't no law getting enforced. I think in, they will. In oh. West in Western Maryland, we have we have two Second Amendment sanctuaries where the sheriff's offices have outright said, "We will not enforce state or federal gun laws in Maryland." Sheriff, think, sheriffs are different, but you don't have. You don't have no. sheriffs are typically in elected positions. Ele well, uh, well, sheriffs are always elected. They're right. the constitutional law enforcement. But in in major cities, you don't really have sheriffs that way. You have that in sure right. in rural counties, but in major cities, it's usually police force where police are their employees of the of the city yeah, but government. Do you, do you think that comes to Omaha? Eventually, yes. Omaha, I don't think sure. that it comes. Yeah. I don't. I don't think any of this. Omaha super live. None of this stuff yeah. comes oh, fast. Yeah. First of all, but it come it it comes to urban areas. So it doesn't actually, it probably doesn't get into, uh, you know, small towns and into rural areas that tends well, to be where people they don't have, have police departments. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is like the, the whole notion, the, the, the kind of impulse, the, the socialist impulse that you're seeing in, in, you know, cities all over the country. And it's, it's not just happening in the United States. This is something that's happening. It's definitely happening in Canada. You can look at the laws that they're passing and the, the, the fact that they have like three openly communist parties in Canada in the, in labor, in the UK, there's tons of communists. There's Ash Sarkuro, who's a, an open communist that I don't think she's actually an MP, but she's, um, um, at least talking head. Anyways, the point is the socialist impulse. It's, it's, it's experiencing a significant up, upswing and you see a lot of it in existing governments at at city levels it's probably not at state not significant at state levels but i mean just look at aoc the the squad are all if they're not actually members of um the dsa they're at least they caucus with them and they're friendly with them and sympathetic to all those ideas those are the democratic socialists these concepts have a goal like these these political ideas have a have a goal in mind and it doesn't matter if it's if it's a step today or if it's two steps today the point is it's coming i wrote i say this frequently i wrote a record called the fall of ideals in 2006 because i smelled this stuff coming and it and every single thing that I've worried about since in in 2012, I released a record called A War You Cannot Win that was that like on the cover, like was to cross AR-15s because there's all kinds of like American Revolution or American Second Revolution imagery in it. In 2010, I released a record called For We Are Many, and it literally the cover of it, of it was was NPCs. It was it wasn't the same idea or it wasn't the same uh thing you see now but it was the idea of some people are actually awake to these ideas and some people aren't this this Which, stuff what was that is called the that was called uh, for we are many and and but but this stuff has been coming for a long time and i've been screaming about it you know as much as i can but like these things don't stop unless they're stopped communists yeah. do not just uh, let you live that's where i come in is like we're not bystanders in this we are leaders that and yeah people are so listening. there's the, the faces and stuff and there's a couple people that kind of have the idea and then there's other people that are just kind of npcs but that came out in 2010 these ideas i've been seeing coming and i've seen this stuff for a long time now it's just i i don't i'm not a bystander i'm i'm commanding and, and communicating with people and changing people on the daily. And I don't want people to lose hope. And if people really truly believe a communist thing is inevitable, they'll give up. It's so, not about inevitable. It's about so, you have to make people aware. People still think I'm, I've been talking about this for 10 years and people think it'll still never think I'm crazy. Yes, so, totally. They think so, it'll never come for them. Wait. Oh, it's just happening. It's happened to that. You know, that guy down the street, oh, it's just New York. It's just this landowner. Oh, cause she didn't, you know, follow the rule correctly. But no, the, this movement we, is based in envy and greed and when you use those sins and those vices and tell people that it is good to be envious of other people's property and other people's things and other people's success and in fact those people are your oppressors and you must rise up and tear them down and tear away the things that they have it will always end like this we we actually had a uh, police officer approach one of our staff requesting to come on the show and talk about the issue of policing, I guess. And I don't know in, in what context. Like a currently serving? A currently serving, uh, Like yeah. a local or? Uh, I don't want to say too much just yet for the for the officer's privacy, but more, I believe, more than just like patrol, like a higher ranking, uh, maybe a sergeant or something. It'd be cool was it, is it like a, like a comms person who wants to come on? No. Oh, okay. No, like, yeah, actual, and more than just like beat cop, like 
So I don't I don't know to what extent or whatever, but Do I, I said absolutely 100%. Uh, because the question is right now, uh, you have a lot of people who have maintained this back to blue no matter who uh, mentality where you have CBP willfully and knowingly trafficking children into sex uh, slavery. And you still have conservatives say, I don't blame them for it. It's not their fault. It's Biden's fault. I'm like, the guy who took the child, it's his fault. Nope. And I'm like, well, okay, I guess that's, I, I don't agree. You have people who right now don't care that when it, when it comes down to it, at CBP, the individuals are the ones committing this action. Regard, like I get Joe Biden. Yeah, bad guy. Hold him responsible. But you got to hold the individuals who do it responsible too. Imagine like uh, a, a guy orchestrates a bank robbery and he hire he, he hires a bunch of you know gangsters to help him. And we go no, no 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 don't arrest the gangsters. They were just hired. They didn't know what they were doing. They they just went along with committing the crime. But it's the guy who planned it. That's who's got to go to jail. Well, of course they all do. But uh, unfortunately, there are still many of those traditional conservatives who have long been back to blue, no matter who. It's like, well, you know, you're going to end up with a communist wearing a badge and you're going to say, I back you. And he's going to be like, he's going to do the red salute. And you're going to go, don't know what that's all about. And then he's going to say, come with me to the gulag. And you go, whatever you say, officer. Speaking of gulags, what in, in, in your new book, Inhumans, like, do you get into the, the, like the stuff that was going on in gulags or do you get in, or are you more talking about like the conditions that led up to putting people in gulags or what? It's, it is, it is more focused because look, I mean, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. Um, gulag archipelago is out there. Solzhenitsyn's out there. There's been so many books written about the bad conditions of communism. We do touch on basically all of the facts, but what we're really interested in, in unhumans is this idea that how did these things get started and at what point can you stop them? And at, because I feel like that's kind of what we all sort of are talking around that yeah. we, we know it's going to get bad if this thing starts. Let me, let so me, at what point can you actually put the brakes on it and do things that meaningfully have a, an effect in the real world, as opposed to just like, you know, being outraged about it. All let, the time? let me ask you guys a question. Uh, can police officers enforce the law selectively? Personally, I think that they should be able to, because I uh, think that's that not what I asked. Is it, can is they? It, well, they, of course they can. You can because, walk off the force. Yeah. So you have never encountered a situation where you've done something wrong and a cop said, don't worry about it. Yeah, they, that's why I said they can. You know, they, they, they have they, the option. They, they can and they do all day, every single day. Yeah. Uh, can they? Yes, obviously. We know that people are but not it's, but out. It's, but if, it's, if you're going over 35, you're at 36, you're not getting pulled over if you're in a 35. It is 100% selective enforcement. Tickets in Chicago, yeah. the, the, I haven't gotten one in 20 years. Actually, when you speed, it says what to to what degree we're spinning it says zero through five five through ten ten to twenty and they check mark that's funny the zeros on there it is that's i was speeding zero miles over that means i wasn't speeding but it's zero anyway, through five okay, i guess right. the idea is but they absolutely if you're one mile over they can but they never do it's weird to me that people hold this belief that police cannot selectively selectively enforce the law when they quite literally have to selectively enforce the law if you are speeding seven miles over the limit and a cop says, I'm going to pull that guy over. And then a guy goes, boom, and zooms past you at 100. He leaves you behind. He doesn't say, nope, nope, nope. I'll call that one in, but I'm I'm enforcing the law here. No, he leaves and you're off the hook. And there's also the issuing of warnings. There, There's, uh, in my life growing up in, uh, having lived, and I shouldn't say growing up, but having lived in several major cities, I think it's an absurdity. And I don't know where this idea comes from that police don't selectively enforce law when it's quite literally police discretion is a requirement of the job. If they're wasting time and resources by going after low level crime, they could get yelled at if it's if it's minor. And then the, the community in, will yell and complain. There are laws like uh, we, we famously uh, joked about the blue law in Florida, which claimed women weren't allowed to skydive on Sundays. Not a single police officer would ever respond to that call. Growing up in Chicago, uh, a homeless guy was attacking uh, my, 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 my family's business, banging on the windows, trying to break it. And the police did not show up for it. It is typical and normal that police selectively choose to enforce law. The problem then becomes, why do we get these stories where a cop, the, the, the one I like to bring up, which is a very egregious example, the officer who pulled over the woman in New Jersey because she had her gun with her for which she is legally permitted, he could have just said, ma'am, I'm going to drive you around this cloverleaf. We're going to send you back to Philly. You can't have a gun in the state. No, instead he said, 60 year old woman should go to prison for the rest of her life. Yep. He chose to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the idea, of, of course, there's, there's, uh, you know, selective enforcement and people don't realize how much discretion is actually built into our laws intentionally. The term, and I think we talked about this on the show before, but the term a reasonable person is all over 
you know, jurisprudence, you know, or, or, you know, past decisions and what would a reasonable person say and what would a reasonable person and reasonable person is a little arbitrary. But if you are a society that shares the same values as in liberal values, things like, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty, we don't use the government to punish our political opponents, etc., then you can kind of rely on your fellow citizens to say, okay, this is reasonable, this is not reasonable, and, and you can make those kind of assumptions. But nowadays, because we're dealing with what essentially amount to counter enlightenment philosophies, philosophies that don't believe that you can actually contact reality, that, that you can use words to shape reality. Those philosophies are counter enlightenment because they reject reason. They reject the, the idea that you can know reality. They embrace subjectivity. And when you embrace subjectivity, it allows you to play all sorts of linguistic games and say, well, I see things this way and I see things that way. And what you believe doesn't matter because of my lived experience. Those, those concepts that we hear like lived experience, those things come from the fact that the philosophy that they're basing their ideas on are counter to the enlightenment. And we have a society based on the enlightenment because you generally can rely on the fact that you interact with reality. And well, even if you had one, well, yes, truth, true, you know, but that kind of stuff is important. And, and without people that agree on reality, you, you know, societies break down. It's and so just let's chaos. say, let's say that you were a subversive and you wanted to break up a good society like that, or you were, because you were envious of the people in that society, what would you do? You would begin the mass importation of people from countries who don't uh, agree or adhere to those beliefs from people who never went through an enlightenment period or a, uh, a Renaissance or, or any of these things, people who have a very different relationship with between the people and the government. They're not even thinking about it from that perspective. Uh, and so what you would do then is you would, is not only would you bring people in like that who have different ideas, but also you would fill the country with people who are essentially strangers. And in doing so, you're number one, you're weakening the purchasing power and the um, the wage earning power of anyone in the working class. You're putting massive pressure on the education system, massive pressure on the healthcare system, massive pressure on the housing system, and you're breaking down the bonds of neighborhoods. It's it's not you know, people are like, oh, how dare you say that? That's like racist or whatever. It's like, it's not racist to say, I want to live in a neighborhood of people who think like me and talk like me and are like me, right? That's just a normal neighborhood. But this idea that we're gonna flood the country with people that are just totally different and all of it's gonna happen millions Millions of people spilling across the border in a very short span uh, into these cities and into these towns. Um, you know, this is how you get like, and and they send so many of them to the Midwest. By the way, they send so many you know, quote unquote refugees from all of these different conflicts around to the the Midwest. And it's like, why, why, why do we need to do this stuff? Why couldn't there? You know, is this foreign policy? No, it's a systemic plan uh to break down the united states and turn us into this like consumer market another... I, I like to do this thought experiment <clears throat> that i have some questions for you jack uh and for whoever else uh the idea is you're in the middle of the woods you're lost you've been there for a week you don't know which way is up you're hundreds or thousands of miles from civilization you've retained a small amount of food and water that you carry on your waist you have a rifle with uh, let's let's just say you've got a you know five five six and you've got uh, ten rounds remaining, and you don't know where you are, and you don't know when you will find a town, and let's just say it's post apocalyptic, let's just say that civilization is is mostly gone and you're and you're a wanderer, and as you're walking through the woods wondering where you where you're going to go or how you're going to get to safety, in the distance you see a man who looks just like you, he also has the exact same rifle. He also appears to have very similar food hanging from his belt and water. And as you're lost in the woods and starving, or, or I should say with limited resources, you see this person, let's say they're 100 yards away. What do you do? Seek cover. Your <laughs> concealment. Sure. Mm, you, yeah, you'd want to you'd hide out and make sure the dude isn't, you know, a threat. All right. So you, you duck behind a tree. Find some kind find, of cover. Find some kind of cover. So yeah. let's say you 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 take you you. There's a knocked over tree. You 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 crouch down behind it. He does the exact same thing. He's staring at you now. What do you do? Honestly, I I mean I never really thought of it to be honest with you. So, no at idea. some point you'd have to try to make contact. So you you yell to him. 
Okay, call out to him, see if he speaks the same language. You he know, doesn't. He yells area. back something incomprehensible. Totally incomprehensible. Completely. You don't know what language it is. 90 well, see, degrees. See, what you're doing here is you're getting into this concept of reciprocity. So if I've approached this person, I go to hide, they go to hide. That shows potentially they're not willing to be aggressive just yet. They're not overtly aggressive. Uh, if I respond with language, even if it's not you know, a, a verbal, you know, a verbal attempt at communication, they respond to verbal attempt at communication. That's, this is, this is how you build a normal relationship. So, so you yell out, hello there or something. Mm -hmm. He yells back, excuse me, are you going to be Zavant and Bowen me right now? What do you do next? You're crouched behind. What do you do? Honest question. Like, what would you guys do in this scenario now? Well, you would see number one, if there's a guy who has anything you need, uh, nah, you're, second, you would. You're post apocalyptic. Break, you, break contact. So if you're post apocalyptic, break contact, or, break contact well, and move away because say, because so the, start, the, the worst thing you can do is get into a situation where you get into you a gunfight. Try to trade, or if 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 possible, um, that's number one. If not possible, then you look for yeah, break contact, or you see if that person you know if you can overpower them. And so uh, the the point of this is. The thought experiment is to get uh, an individual to consider to actually think about what they would do in this scenario, because there's no right answer at all. There, there, I, I, there is no planned outcome for what this story is that I present to you. I'm not here trying to trick you into thinking something's going to happen. I'm literally asking to consider what you would do if you encountered the scenario. It's entirely possible this individual is thinking, if I don't get more food, I will die. I don't know this guy. I can't talk to him. He might try and steal from me. So there's a million different variables. I mean, you might, I've had a, um, so many people and typically liberals, like whenever I ask a liberal this question, they go, I, I would raise my hands and start walking towards and I go, bang. <laughs> oh, no, no question. I'm like, bang, you're dead. Yeah. He walks over and he takes your gun. He takes your ammo. He takes your food. Yeah. And then he walks away. Of course. And they're like, what, why would he do that? I'm like, because he doesn't want to die. He doesn't know you. He can't communicate with you. And you're armed. Well, I put my gun down. Bang, you're dead. Oh, you put your gun down. Okay, now he walks up, takes you all your food, takes your gun, takes your ammo, and leaves you there to die. You mean his gun? <laughs> you mean his gun. Yeah, yeah. his gun. Yeah, uh, right. Or it's entirely possible you walk up with your hands up, and he slings his gun back, keeps his hands up, you walk over, you shake hands, and then you hug, finding somebody. It's entirely possible. Sure. And then you try and communicate, figure out what language it is, and maybe you can work together to survive. We don't know what happens. But the reality is, if you don't know... The challenge is you bring it up. Reciprocity is, reciprocity is an excellent point. If, if there's which, any word that I need to introduce to conservatives, to moderates, to libertarians, to centrists, to all of these people, it is reciprocity. That is the only way that we can get out of this. When you take cover, this person now perceives a level of aggression. Why are you taking cover? That's a defensive stance. Combat has been engaged. What do they do? They say, I'll take cover as well. And so it's very possible that unintentionally, this drives escalation into a shootout. It might. Because now you're, you, that guy takes cover too and you see he's got a gun and you're thinking like, if I try to get up and run for it, he might shoot me in the back. So what do you do? Well, I mean, you, you do. It's not I, easy. I would personally, like if you There's got no a gun, answer. if you got a guy that's got a gun, like in my opinion, you break contact and you do your best to get away from them without, you know, you don't turn around, you don't take your eyes off and you, you move away because the risk of an engagement is far greater than the reward of maybe a, a sandwich the guy might have. Well, because he said, obviously he didn't he's just say you were starving. You said starving. But I, I meant like you're hungry, you have limited provisions, it's post apocalyptic, you know, you're wandering through the forest. The oh. point is, like in modern civilization, this is not this is not something we need to consider. If you're walking through the woods yeah. and you're lost in the woods, you say, Help me, please. And the guy's gonna go, Who's there? And you're gonna say, I've been lost in the woods. Go, oh my, let me call the nine one one. That's actually where Ian was for a couple <laughs> when he was when he was off off the show. He was just he was just wandering lost in the woods. He's just wandering through the woods. No, he found his way out. He followed the moss yeah. and the trees to find his way north. It was a trail Delicious of moss. trail of bodies Look, that was. If you're found in, if you're post apocalyptic, you know, cuts kill you cuts yes. get infections yep. and you die Dysentery, so that's that's like the wrong mushroom so like if you you talk to anybody that's like survival stuff or whatever if you're in a situation where you don't know someone and and there's a possibility of some yeah. kind of engagement Bro, you avoid the hell out of the engagement because you me, don't want to get into a fight best way let, to, let me best just, way to get out of a bad situation is not be there in the first yeah, place but let, let me just Absolutely. let me just present it this way uh you guys question for all of you how many people do you know that you would consider friends who at one point betrayed you in some very serious way Oh yeah, that, or I, I should say, I currently have, consider. Let, let me let me say, <laughs> have you in your life at any point had someone you consider to be a close friend betray you in sure. a serious way? Yeah, no. 
You've never had that happen. You've never been betrayed. You've also never been arrested. So, you know, very sheltered Ian, I guess. Lived a good life. I mean, I yeah, I don't think I really... I, really I certainly know. have. And uh, considering that there are people that you know, that you trusted, who betrayed you in some very serious way, how could you even begin to trust a stranger who shakes your hand? Well, isn't there's a there's a story that this is how uh, the handshake was. I'm sure you know. No weapon um, that yep. came out of that. If I'm going to shake your hand, it's actually so that I can show my forearm and show that I don't have some well, you're kind like of shake weapon it, there. shake their but arm, also shake their your, robe, your right so you hand see there's no metal in there. Your, it's because your dominant, that's your, your, your dominant hand. So that's yeah. like your fighting hand. So the idea is that. And then, and even the older handshake was like, I'm actually going to grip the forearm, but, right? Like feel for a blade in their yeah. sleeve yeah. and stuff like that. You know, yep. we were earlier, you were talking about what people would do to disrupt. This is a little bit of a side, but it's tagging on to what you were saying before we go into this cool metaphor about being in the woods, which I like, is that how you, how would you disrupt a society of reason? And you were saying you bring in people that were, don't speak the language that override the, the economics, but another way to disrupt a system of reason Power Piven. is to tell them they're all going to fail, to make them think they're all going to lose, to say, it's just going to get worse. And then those people give up. So I don't want to become that guy. And I don't want any of us to become They that abandon guy. ship. Yeah. Every man for himself. You keep saying over and over again, it's impossible. We can't win. And then people say, well, then I better just abandon and only do my thing. Like, I'm going to go dig a hole and go hide in it because there, we, we can't win. If we build networks, build community, build physical locations, that's why we're like with Casper, we're like, we got to have this physical location. We got to do live shows. We have to do monthly events. We have to do the Saturday morning events. We need people to come together so they do not feel hopeless. Yes. Yeah, this is this is this is actually one of the key. Um, so we, we talk about um, we have a whole section on in there called that we call the great men of history. And, you know, there's there's like some very spicy stuff that we get into with we get into Julius Caesar and Francisco Franco and uh, get into Rangel. And, and but then we even get into in the modern times like Elon Musk and and really just men of means. Right. So you you re infiltrate the institutions or like what Elon did with uh, with Twitter, which is obviously an irregular counter revolution, if you will, uh, in purchasing it. And then he started label. Remember, he started labeling journalists and NPR and NPR yeah. rage quits. Right. So these are all counter revolutionary uh, actions. But the idea that men of means, men of will, forming networks, building new institutions, counter institutions, uh, these are all absolutely clear because then you will find those like minded individuals. And it's those small groups of people uh, historically speaking, it's been predominantly men, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Maybe we can let some of the ladies in um, that have driven history. That have absolutely these were strong men surrounded by strong men. That is always how you end these things. You either nip it in the bud, uh, so you don't have to get to the point where. And I don't think we will will be in like a uh, civil war type situation. It's going to continue to be this low level irregular revolution that continues. Yes, there'll be skirmishes, um, but it's, it's going to be these, these multiple micro revolutions that are conducted again and again and again. And the only way to fight it back against them is to have these networks and your counter institutions built up. The only way parallel economy, download yes. public yeah. Yeah. funny TV shows for kids. That's why as this great philosophy. I was talking to a friend you mean of mine like the in Brave Miami books, TV. What's show? it? Yeah. Like Brave books. You find a bunch of people that have similar political beliefs. You come together and then you start doing things that are completely apolitical because with these people that you know, you can trust and you build like music with just for the kids can love. This you is make Ian's TV 20, shows. Everybody right you, now, you, this is a 20 for you. You grow crops, <laughs> you do gardening, you do all sorts of cool stuff because you know that as those things become popular with the apolitical people, they're going to look to who built that. I want to be like that guy. What and, are his? I want to adopt his beliefs. And here's the best part. With, with the likes of Public Square, did you know that there's going to be, and probably already are, a lot of businesses signing up for Public Square, not because they care about America, but because they see a path to get rich. Yep. Critical there's mass. Gonna, That's gonna, critical mass. Exactly. When the grifters are like, yes, I love America. America is great. Buy my cheese. You're Welcome. Like, yep. Thank you. Yeah, Patriot <laughs> cheese. Yep. You know. When, and so I see all these businesses that, that start signing up. We want to get to the point, and I think we're there because we talked about this a couple weeks ago with these TikTokers who keep making these videos where Biden is bad. They go, my life is miserable. I can't afford rent. It's not fair. Biden ruined the economy. Boom, 4 million views. Then you find out this woman's married, has eight cats, and lives in a two-bedroom apartment, and you're <laughs> like, huh? And she just went on vacation. You're like, that's not true. But these grifters realize if I'm on the side, if I'm on this side, I'll get views, I'll get traffic. What that does is that's the critical mass where apolitical grifters are espousing your message for you for nefarious reasons. But 
That means the tide has shifted where the NPCs have abandoned wokeness as a, as a means to make so money. So what you're talking about is, and we talk about this as well, it's, it's the viable competing vision. So communism is very good at this, by the way. Communism, Phil, you know, communism yeah. portrays the utopia. They talk yeah. about how everything's free, how everything's going to be. They're obsessed with this. Uh, they, it's, it's a really good marketing pitch, but that's of course all it is. It is a marketing pitch. They don't actually believe it. And so well, I, I kind of like, it, I cringe every time I see conservatives and like the IDW types and the center left and classic liberals, you know, kind of arguing, well, this is why this won't work. And this is why they, they don't actually believe it. All right. They just want to get to the killing, robbing and stealing part. You know, they want to just lock up landlords and go after Donald Trump and all these different yeah. things. It's so, well, we haven't really they talked about hate. Trump like at all tonight. But anyway, um, exactly. And <laughs> the the idea that, you know, that they believe in their utopia is silly, too. But at the same time, you can't just sit there and say, oh, their utopia will never work if you're not actually describing your own vision and we're talking when we talk about the counter vision it's it's you've got to overshadow what they're talking about you've got to talk it's got to be political it's got to be social that's where the music comes in it's got to be economic it's got to be media based where everybody can participate in this thing and we are starting to see that we really are starting to see that with all of these different franchises but i think the right or whatever you want to call the competition to this this irregular revolution is we need to depict that vision much much better it's actually something that i've sent i've sent this message to the trump campaign and said that you know i think that at this point you know how he ends his rallies and it's sort of that like downward and they have like the cinematic music and the violins yeah. come out and it's really sad I think that made sense during the primary, but I think they should start shifting it to an uplifting message at the end that ties in with this. What we need are gym bros. Yep. Lots, Go on. Lots of gym bros. That's right. Continue. I'll tell you why. Get jacked. Get Well, no, 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 no. Uh, you should get jacked. But the reason why we need gym bros is that when you get, what, what does the left say? On the right, you have this work hard, clean your room, bucko, Lift the heaviest thing. The left goes, no, no, don't do none of that. Jerk off, play video games, eat ice cream. And what's the short-term easy thing? However, there's a lot of people, men and women, who, who do these things, they're unhappy. What we need is that enthusiastic trope of the gym bro who goes up to that scrawny guy and goes, looking good, dude, you're killing it. Come hang out with me and the boys and we're gonna get you ripped. I, I recommend uh, one of my favorite like f bits of fiction is Mob Psycho 100. Have you guys ever heard of that? No. no. It was a web comic. They made an anime. But the main character is this scrawny, weak little kid, but he's got tremendous psychic powers. And so he joins the the body modification, like body transformation club, and they're all super ripped. And all these guys who are massive and like and really strong are rooting and cheering for him. They're like, wow, you did it. You did a push up. They're like, yeah. And they're high fiving him. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. When there's some dude who feels weak and in in inadequate, you get those dudes who look, and it's not just about guys, you get people who are leaders, who are successful, who have accomplished it, who tell you, my friend, you're going to be cool like us. You're going to be strong yep. and you're going to be beautiful and we're going to help you do it. And we're going to cheer you on the whole way. That's so important. The cheer you on part is yeah. so important. Motivation. Because like, was it? Motivating. Well, yeah. Who do you, you want to hang out with? The left they're mean all the time. You can't make jokes. You can't have fun. They, they say, it's fine that you're obese and, and don't be mad about it. But people are still unhappy when they're like, I wish I wasn't like this. If you got the dude who was like really, really fit. When What I always tell people is, I can't speak for gyms. And I use the gym bro as a generic trope. But I can tell you in skateboarding. Typically, if you don't skate and you go to a skate park and you see a group of kids hanging out and you and you want to skate. And let's, let's say you're mass, you're fat. You're fat, you're out of shape. You walk up and say, guys, I decided to change my life. I bought a skateboard. They're gonna be like, bro, let me show you everything I can teach. They're gonna high five you. They're gonna cheer for you. You're gonna be, you're gonna be charioted around. They're gonna be like, this is what we're talking about. Dudes love to share their skills and knowledge. That's th This is totally the one of us meme. One right. of us, one <laughs> of us, one of us. Like that well, is totally what dudes do. Like when addition, you've got dudes hanging out that are like, look, that have the same kind of goals, going to the gym, being the best they can. PRs, which is another wonderful thing about going to the gym. PRs, right? Personal records. 
Like the, it's personal. Yep. It's all about beating the last time you were there, being the best you. Not about competing with the guys that are stronger than you or the competing with the guys that are weaker than you. You're competing with yourself, like, and everybody's going to cheer you on when you're going. For if, I always if, love if, music if and are, acting because of that. Because the better you are, the better the people around you become. And so, really, you're not. You're going to look like probably the weakest link of this amazing band or scene. Because you're so you're, you're listening and you're empowering the people around you, so it's not even a competition, but I, it's like a community building experience. I can only assume for gyms because I'm not a, a gym bro, but I can say for skateboarding, and I assume it's the same. If you are a newcomer, you can you you can lift the smallest weight, but it's your record. They're going to be cheering for you. They're Sean, be high Sean Strickland you. literally just posted something about this the other day, um, where uh, I'll have to paraphrase it because I can't right now. But he said something about how his one of his favorite days when he's in the gym is when he sees somebody walking in and he can tell it's their first day in the gym. Yeah. Yep. And he's like, I look for that guy and I love that guy because you know what? We were all that guy one this, day. This could be you. Yep. You've never worked out. You want to get better. So you walk into the gym and you're like, where do I start? And Sean Strickland walks up with a smile on his face and gives you a high five and goes, bro, you are the man. Greatest feeling in the world. Now, I bring that up because that's how you counter the left's hatred and envy and jealousy. They tell you to steal it. They say, you deserve it. It's yours. Just take it. But what we need is that positive, join us, be confident, be cool, be powerful, be yourself. That's what we need. Oh, God, that's so great to hear, man. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's right. So it's, there's, there's two pieces to this, right? So because you, you, there's, I'm there's, sorry, I'm sorry. You, you'd never leave the gym if Sean Strickland welcomed you on your first day. You'd be like, You'd be you'd be a, a glowing orb. You'd be like, oh my gosh, I can hang out with Sean Strickland, right? You know, we can we can we can mean tweet together. Although I can't mean tweet <laughs> because I gave I gave up mean tweeting for Lent, yeah. um, and that includes on air uh, appearances. Easter's so, the thirty first this year, Easter's isn't it? Coming up, yes. So yes. come on, nine mean, more days. You, you, nine more days. You, you can write the tweets for later. Just don't no, put them out. Cop out. No, okay. <laughs> you can't, true. Phil. You can't trick God. I'm not <laughs> saying. I'm not correct. saying. God knows the tweets are there. He God sees has this. a sense of humor. I guarantee God loves me tweets. No, I know, I know. But but it would not truly be a sacrifice fair, if fair. I was still fair writing the tweets. Not. It would be funny fair. if on the 31st, just all of these like I out considered of, it. I literally, I literally tweets just I, flooded. I, I had a whole conversation with God. Just like with, yo, let him rip, Jack. I, I was I was uh, I was chatting with that guy uh, still boneless on. Uh, on Twitter about it and I was like he and he suggested that and I was like what if I could like time them and then save it and try and I was like no no it's a cop out you can't trick God you can't trick God no you're not allowed but it's that's what I'm saying though it's it's those two things right so you've got like you've got like your, your you've got your right wing right you've got your left wing and then you've got your normies so you've got your normies these are all the people that are kind of in the middle that are just like, like pliable um, or, or, or don't even want to be involved in the culture wars, except that the people on the left keep coming for them and forcing them to be in the culture wars. And so what the right needs to do is, is, you know, or, or if you're just on the right side of that, and I want to, I'm trying to be inclusive in opening um, or whatever. And um, that you need to, you need to number one, provide this competing vision, this alternate hopeful vision that it's like, and that this is what I was saying to Trump campaign. I was like, we can all get rich. We can all get healthy again. We can make America amazing. It's going to be this really cool country. We're going to be futuristic. We're going to have new cities, new architecture. Everybody's going to love it. But then at the same time, in order to stop the revolutionaries, you do have to actively stop them. Like it's not enough to simply oppose yeah. communism. You must be actively anti-communist. And if you don't stop them, they will not stop on their own. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to super chats if you haven't already. Would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, head over to timcast.com, click join us to become a member and support our work directly. Don't forget, Cast Brew Coffee is available. It's the weekend, so we do not have the members only show tonight, but we're gonna be filming and producing all throughout the weekend for the Boonies show. We got a bunch of fun stuff planned, and then of course we're back on Monday. But let's uh, get to your super chats. Clint Torres says, "Howdy, people." Hey, Clint. Howdy, Clint. The bonus soul says we are honored to announce that we are number. What is that? 77,159 on the trans transphobe list that dropped earlier. We're truly humbled to be among the list of great transphobes of our generation, despite our band's tiny following. What number? 77,000? Yeah. Have you looked this up? Me and you were on there. No, I know. So, I, who made it? And what is it? I don't know. Apparently, it's just 
everybody that's ever said anything that a trans person didn't like because there's seventy seven thousand people it, or is it, more. Is it ranked? I don't. No, I don't think. I think it's alphabetical. Oh, yeah, it's it's alphabetical. Because if I'm not in the top ten, then I'm, I know I really there was need like to try hard. <laughs> there was like three. I was at like twenty five hundred, and I was still in the A's. I'm like, this is long. they had because because like I think I think it was Brookings a year ago did you know the biggest misinformation uh, outlets in America, and I was like only number five, and I was so upset. I was oh. like, come on, so close. Maybe next. I don't try think harder. I. War when, when, when they did that misinformation election thing, yeah, yeah, I think I was like number thirteen. Nice. Now, actually, I was offended by that because they—it's the craziest thing, where I don't care if you were actively saying Trump won, Germany Dominion, whatever it was, but I never said those things. And you they literally l- argued with people about. Those I things. argued with Bannon twice, and I was like ballot harvesting, ballot harvesting, ballot harvesting, uh, and then which is legal. And then they put me on this list. They run these stories. And it was wild because when Google Gemini came out, apparently someone asked it and it said, Tim Pool is a known blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's, I was like, can I sue Google for defamation for, it, for saying things like this? It truly is. I think you're the guy that it would be so convenient for people if you were like a, just an evil guy. It would be so convenient because you wear all black, you, get, <laughs> you let your emotions come out, like, but you're a good person. So like it drives them insane. Like I see you do, or at least neutral, but I feel uh-huh. you like neutral and good. Like you, you on and, the and, upper and, end of the. And, and I think what they don't see is that I'm probably the most humble person on the internet. No, I am. <laughs> you can't be my humility, dude. You can't be your humility. <laughs> All right, we'll grab some more. Uh, Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, "Smash that buy pillow like button." <laughs> I haven't said anything about the <clears throat> sleep accessory word this evening. But of course, we all know the greatest promo code is promo code POSO, powerful promo code POSO, mypillow.com for the best night's sleep in the whole wide world. The Authentic Hydro says, so hear me out. If you hire Candace like PBD hired Cuomo, you can bring her on whenever someone wants to talk about Israel-Palestine so you don't have to bother with it. (laughs) That's true. I just, there's no way we could afford to hire Candace Owens. She's gonna, she's gonna make. I don't know, man. She's gonna make fifty million bucks. She launches her new company. She's I hope Candace money. does more documentaries and docu series. I don't know if you know how many people have done this. I've actually watched all of her documentaries and docu series, and I think they're fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. Her George Floyd one, which you know was really overshadowed by all the Kanye stuff. Uh, excuse me, yay. We don't like to dead name around here. Uh, was fan- it was just incredible. It was really incredible. Uh, her, you know, the unmaking of a murderer was incredible. I think when she does those personally, I I love them. OMG Puppies says, I stopped following the Daily Wire. They removed user comments a few months ago. Ben has gone full neoconservative on Ukraine. It's all he talks about now. Really? We added, uh, so over at scnr.com, if you're reading the news there, we, uh, uh, Bill uh, Ottman created a commenting system through Minds, which is really cool. So, because uh, we wanted comments to be like public. We wanted it to be like a networked thing where when you comment, it, con- it contributes to a larger conversation elsewhere. Cool stuff. Cool. Yeah. Is it like, I kind of feel like Ben has always been pretty fairly hawkish. Certainly not a d- dove. So the idea that he's like gone full is kind of like, eh. well, he's been called neocon forever. Yeah. Like he's, he's always been like, you know, comfortable with, with a, with a muscular United States foreign policy. If we're going to be polite Clint, about it. Clint Torres says, Phil, go to the gym. Clint, I did this morning. I will be there tomorrow morning as well. Oh yeah. My thing is like, uh, you know, there's a lot of people ragging on Candace. They're calling her anti-Semitic or whatever. And I'm like, she, you're allowed to have opinions. Yeah. Uh, they say Ben Shapiro is hawkish. He's a conservative. I'm like, he's allowed to have opinions. The only issue I take is when someone posts things, something that's like wrong. They're lying for power, which is a, which is typical typical of the left. So it's like, I'll certainly disagree with Candace. I'll certainly disagree with Ben. But that's fine. We, we get along when we we, 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 we we get along in disagreeing on issues, but agreeing on the things that are happening in this world yeah. and, and, and moral frameworks. And then you have the left, which lie about what's happening while trying to enact horribly amoral or, or immoral things. I mean, just point to the cover. That's right. <laughs> Basically, like this is this is where you get when you allow those people in power. This is where you get every time. Tyler McFarland says, have you seen the video of the guy with Neuralink play, uh, using it to play Civilization yeah. Six? Yeah. 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 He said he played eight hours. All night. He, he could, before he couldn't play for 10, 15 minutes because he'd have to have his parents there. He's quadriplegic to move around and he'd have to have his body shifted every once in a while. But now he just, he said he could lay in bed and play eight hours with his brain. That's crazy. Like, was he the mouse? I think he, he just uses his thoughts. He uses his thought to move the, the cursor, to move the, the stuff around, yeah. And it's moving really quick and yeah. like, 
I saw I saw oh, I saw only a piece where he, where he played chess and it was moving really fast. Yeah, I didn't even like, see wow. a cursor. I just saw the pieces moving. Wow, it's great! And it, I mean, and it's it's going to get more impressive. This, I mean, what was it? Just last year is when they first started, you know, doing the stuff with uh, with humans. I guess if I understand. Correctly. Well, uh, so. uh, brain to mouse interface has been around for a long time, mm-hmm. but I think this is just like opening the door into a greater Neuralink technology. Mm-hmm. So uh, we bought an, an electroencephalogram in like 2012 that can track two brain waves, which you could put on your head. You don't got to wire anything and you put it on and you can control uh, two vectors. So that should be enough to move a mouse. Yeah. Left, right, up, down e- easily. Yeah. You could move a mouse with that. Just, you should get some more of those. Get some, get some new ones. Like We were going to order one. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the new ones can do up to like 16 different brain waves. I suppose the issue is using brain waves to uh, control something is very different from directly wiring it into your brain, which is su- probably substantially easier because you're actually sending signals from your brain and actively controlling the mouse. Whereas with the brain waves is you're trying to figure out how to make your brain emit certain brain waves, which cause the mouse. It's a little different. But uh, theoretically, with the modern uh, EEG, you could fly a drone with, with, your, with a headband. Our uh, Discord chat says that he made his first tweet today using that system so whoa yeah. okay. using Neuralink yeah that's what he says so. he's Neuralinked in I wonder how he did it so yeah I mean it makes sense X and Neuralink no, and all a guy in the discord said that this guy did his first yeah. tweet today. oh wow okay. yeah. uh, well what the, the, the thing to pay attention to is when write capabilities so right now mm-hmm. what we're seeing is read capabilities yep. the computer is able to read the signal from the brain but when the computer is able to write to the brain that's when the door opens to People are going to say, uh, bro, I, I, I guarantee you, if if Elon Musk came out right now and said, I'd like to make a deal with all of the liberals, I'm going to give you a neural link, which will put you into the Harry Potter universe and <laughs> you just don't have to don't vote. They'd be like, sign me up. I'm done. Lock me in. Put put the bug bug juice in my mouth and I will lay in the Matrix pod for the rest of my life. If I could physically just live in Harry Potter world, they'd do it. But the leftists wouldn't. They would. No, the left, because this is my thesis, though, the leftists would still be upset that there were people out there not living in the Harry Potter world. <laughs> yeah, they'd be okay, happy. That's there true, that's true. They would be, look, leftists are really, really pissed off that there are people out there that are happy without their influence. <laughs> yeah. Like, happy, that's true, successful, man. good-looking, talented, <laughs> because, again, they are not any of those things. But literally, like, and, like, it's not like that's... It's not like it's supposed to be like some kind of knock. Like it, it, the the perspective of I'm a victim and everything's oppressing me, blah blah blah, and all the you know the world's out to get me and my body's a prison, blah blah blah. It's, it's, all that stuff is cluster B personality it's, traits. This is inevitable. What'll happen is the ease of which the implant for a neural link will will escalate as technology develops. Only some people will have it. No one will think think much about it. They'll be like, oh, it's just for some people. But then some guy is going to be like, well, you know, I can easily run my company now that I've Neuralinked because when I plug in my mobile device to my directly to my, my Neuralink, I don't have to bother with like, I just know when I get a message. So it's almost like telepathy. And people are going to be like, yeah, well, you know, I don't I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. But then this guy is going to start hiring and he and someone's going to be like, I also got the mobile uh, networking Neuralink. And he's like, oh, great, you're hired. It'll grow to the point where you won't have one. You'll apply for a job and they'll say, and what's your mobile Neuralink uh, uh, interface number? And you'll go, I, I don't have one of those. And they'll go, well, no, how do I get in touch with you? And you say, well, you can call me on my phone. We don't have phones. We, uh, What year are you living in? And dude, the thing is like, once you get that kind of like connectivity, it's completely reasonable to think that a a motivated person that actually will will actually do their job like they want to, their productivity goes up by 75 100 150 percent and then why would a company fi- hire someone that wouldn't do that well then your brain gets hacked i was, sure. I was just gonna say it i said what happens when hackers get involved bro and I was, hackers go in and they start they start changing your algorithm they start removing or memories. replacing memories or inserting memories i would i was um, talking to i was talking to rollo today about this dude, about like when i first came down here like why i was yep. so psyched to be like a part of the things because i really believe that like cognitive liberty is up for grabs in the next 50 to 100 years we don't even have laws that Did, get close to defining any of that so yeah. at black hat and defcon 10 years ago they were running uh uh talks lectures on hacking uh people's uh, pacemakers 
yeah. and their insulin pumps. Jesus. And they were talking about how because these things are wirelessly controlled or Bluetooth controlled, especially a pacemaker inside your body, an attacker could get the signal for the device and then turn it off. So there could be a guy with a pacemaker walk and just boom, right to the ground, dead. Hacker did it. Crazy. I could see him making it so you think that they change your brain so you think meat tastes gross. Like yes. They did that in mass to people. No, I think they've already we, kind we, of we, done we definitely like talked about this. They're going to hand you a plate of jiggly roach roach paste and you're going to go, what is that? Oh, I forgot to turn the neural link on. And then you're going to go like this. <laughs> These and then tannins gonna, are delicious. And then it, no, it's going to turn into a steak. And then it's going to be. I'm so excited for this. And then the crazy thing is you will see people eating different things than you. Well, this is this is referenced in the in the Matrix, right? How do you know what yep. a steak really tastes like? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. augmented. The robots yeah. didn't know, so that's why everything tastes like chicken. Right. You're they're, they're going to be like, don't worry. This <laughs> Ian's is, thinking about it. I was thinking about <laughs> augmented reality and the neural net and When's how the they'll last work. Time you had a really good steak. They'll, how how will the augmented last reality weekend. connect nice. and collide with neural net? I mean, because if the neural net, if you're just seeing it anyway, but that's like pre-hack. Um, Dude, watch Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. When you're gonna the, say watch Ghostbusters. So when we did the uh, together again the music video, one. we had a, a, a can, uh, we had an homage to Ghost in the Shell when Carter hits the hack button or whatever to blow up the drone, the the, the alien drone or whatever it is. It's the Laughing Man. It's a smiley face with like you know, like a baseball cap. There was a in Ghost in the Shell. There's a hacker. Whenever someone looks at him, all they see is this weird avatar floating over his face, so they can't see what his face is. So then they're like, quick, pull up the surveillance cameras. And then when they do, the surveillance cameras show the exact same thing. Because people's brains are cyberized with nan- with nanites, the person sends out a signal and then you can't see his face. Yeah, self-assembling nanobots is another thing. These, and that's a real tech that's been around since 2018 at least. Let's grab some more super chats. James Hates Everything says Russia has been attacked by Chechen Islamic terrorists several times. Attacked grade school and theater. No conspiracy needed. Agreed. That's why it's like, you know. That was the first yeah. thing we said. Right. The Beslan Massacre and the uh, Moscow Theater. Yeah. All right. Tech Roo says, I was in a safety meeting a few weeks ago, and it suddenly occurred to me, wouldn't graphene reinforced concrete and asphalt just become the next asbestos? No, I don't think so. It, uh, it enhances the strength by about three times when you put bulk graphene in I think, concrete. And I'm not, I'm not really sure that graphene is a is a carcinogen is it it's just carbon isn't it it's pure yeah it's pure carbon yeah. and it uh it's it's um stabilized so it doesn't like fall out into the atmosphere and stuff but it's it, you know it might rub off on your skin and then you get a little bit of carbon in your body it's not necessarily it's a lot of it's untested graphene oxide's another thing completely it's like rusted graphene basically oxidized that might do other stuff um all right jason dixon says seriously looking forward to seeing how tim spins this into cops are bad god save jack poso he has chosen to lead us Back to the Lord God. You see, but I set you up. That's why I asked you guys, <laughs> do you think the cops will go around arresting people? Because I think it's unfair to accuse me of being uh, uniquely holding of that opinion when it's an opinion formed by other people who I've had conversations with. Plainly. Yes, Jack will lead you to God. And it's very Absolutely. Healthy. Just go to Latin Mass. Just everyone just go to Latin Mass. Just go there. Just go there and experience it and try it and 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 you'll you'll be there. I was saying this on the uh, culture war. If you go to church, you will be happier. Yes. And uh, the reason why I said that, because I know a lot of, I, I say these things like this to immediately do the shock of the, um, of the statement, but it's not about faith. It's not about church. It's about community. It's about if you have people around you who are wondering where you are and want you to be there with them, it may be that one day a family member dies and you're really sad. Well, you wallow at home doing nothing. But if you are a regular at church, your community will say, hey, this is weird. Bill's not here today. Can someone go check on him? All of these things add up. You have people who are there for you, who are concerned about you, who care about you. Uh, some people who might not like you all that much, but with a high density of individuals who expect your company, it is the is the act of being involved in community and having neighbors, which will typically lead to a greater level of happiness and support. That's why I just say simply church, because church historically has been that for us. We don't have that now. That being said, Community in general makes you happier. So you can find that in many ways. But it's it's f- because we've lost so many third spaces in yeah. society today that um, it's it's hard to find any of those that aren't work or home. And so church actually does exist as a kind of third space for people 
of really any age to go and exhibit in because i mean the third space is literally just like where did you used to go to hang out but all of the places yeah. that we used to hang out have been systemically removed yeah I, I often tell the story about how I uh, met up with Seamus when he was going to Latin Mass in Charles. I think I think it's a Latin Mass in Charlestown, and uh, just to see all the neighbors hanging out, all the parents are talking, all the kids are playing, the kids are finely dressed, wearing button ups, and I'm like, "Look, man, you can't deny it, okay? Right. Kids who are properly dressed and playing games with their parents nearby, and the neighbors are communicating, is an infinite." infinitely greater boon than what we see today with kids going out and getting in trouble. Parents don't know who their neighbors are, don't know where their kids are at. And I'm just like, I'm not saying this is an inherently faith-based statement. I'm saying quite literally as a function, what church does is something we need. And again, there, you, you need to build the third space as Jack was saying. So this is, this is, this is a great example of what you can say that a lot of people will get, will get hung up on whether or not you can prove God is real or not. But one thing that might be a bit more powerful and bring more people in is if you say God is essential. That none of this works without that shared understanding of a God. Man. I keep thinking about subatomic spinners. You know what those are? They spin up. There's these fermions and bosons that create matter like protons and neutrons and electrons, depending on their subatomic spin. And I just visualize trillions of them all spinning in succession. And I feel like that's like God pulsing. It's just one perspective of what it is. I was, I was reading about deism and there was some component of it that I thought was interesting. I don't know enough about it, but I, I, there was something about people believing that there is a natural religion that was lost or something to that effect, like the natural connection to God yeah. was lost by humanity and twisted by politicians and grifters and con artists. And I agree with that, but I don't know what deist philosophy is pretending to that, but I do think that intrinsically humans would have a connection to God were it not for the forces that try, try to pull them away from, from God. Well, and so in Christianity, of course, it's so like there's the, you know, the, the more Buddhist uh, belief is that, you know, we're all sort of connected and we're all spiritual creatures. And that's, that's one side. And there's the other side that we're just these, um, you know, we're wet we're the, robots, yeah, the wet robots, we're beasts and we're just a little bit smarter than, you know, the animals, but that's all the, the only distinction. But then there's in Christianity, it's this middle ground and uh, Norm MacDonald of all people talked about this once where it's like, we, we have a spark of the divine, but because of original sin, we've been made wretched. And so we've been sort of cut off from our being able to tap into that divinity and uh, divinity and so through the mediator through christ it's like this doorway back to what we were originally intended to be so it's like you were originally intended to be a, a spiritual being a being with di this direct divinity but something went wrong and yeah. now we're stuck in this current state and to get out of it this is the door you go it's through. when you said the current state because i think electricity is actually dampening our ability to connect with god it's like this mag it's causing magnetic um interference and it's the current you're saying this current thing that we're in it is current it's this current and Maybe. it's so useful for the human animal to use but the spirit is like getting sucked into the screen and right like, so how do you or, how do you or, how do you coordinate how do you calibrate your spiritual frequency to be on the proper current but what if what if it's the There's fluoride a, oh, calcifying grounding. our pineal gland so we can no longer sense in the choroid plexus? Well, here's here's what I was saying, uh, and I, I don't mean this quite literally, but it is kind of interesting that people who live in rural areas tend to be more spiritual, believe in God, and they live off well water, which has low fluoride content. People who live in cities are detached from God and have high fluoride content. And those people in the woods, they in don't the have US, power lines but there's as much. Like, you can go, I know, I'm kidding. I'm not saying yeah, it's true. I'm just saying it's funny. Yeah, you can, go to, you can go to countries where people live in cities and are, are very connected to God. All right, we'll grab some more Super Chats. What do we got here? Ghost Crusaders says, Tim, as a former property manager in New York City, this happens 100% of the time and the cops don't even ask for proof. Boom. As wow. long as the other person says they can prove they do nothing, they don't want to get involved. And then we have, um, where were we just, did I just... I lose the super chat where did it go it disappeared how does that happen it's gone uber chat if if you want to know the, all the answers just buy book buy uh, book <laughs> where do they buy unhumans buy book buy book ian buy it's, it's book everywhere now. it's up everywhere it's up everywhere dude i want a copy buy book can you sign that fourth no i'm not gonna well, give it to yes, me but not for you no. i want it no this is my Jason. promotional 
tool. Look Jason Dixon says, Tim, math, several hundred thousands of interactions with cops each month, but the 12 bad incidents over the last 10 years mean all are bad. Followed by, Tim, as a former property manager in New York City, this happens 100% of the time, and the cops don't even ask for proof. As long as they, the other person says they can prove, they do nothing. They don't want to get involved. So uh, there you go. Ghost Crusaders answered for you, Jason. But my, my, my contention on that is because he said he was in New York City, right? Yeah. That guy. So because he was, and that's what Phil's talking about, because he knows that the people in charge of city government are completely infiltrated by communists or in, in many cases, just avowed open communists themselves. And they know that if they get involved, then they're going to be the ones under scrutiny. So it's again, them following. And to your point, I'm not arguing the morality of, of the point you're making that they could walk off the job and not, not fulfill that order, but what their order oh, is no, coming no, no, no. from. They could just not do it. They could literally stay on the job. Yeah, and then the then the squatter writes down their bill or writes down their uh, you know their badge number and then goes to the city and makes it a files a complaint against against them. I, I but that's just you don't lose your job. They just say what happens? Be like, oh, a guy was break he broke it was a break in we removed him. I don't know what, you, what, what we charged him with burglary. And then you have you know Benjamin Crump shows up and he's suing the city and he's going after you. So you have choices. The police have choices. They can enforce burglary laws. They can say leave me out of it. Or they can quit. But it's not against the law in New York. And not against the law to break into someone's house? Squatting. But, but the issue is, if you can't prove it, you're not a squatter. You're a burglar. At the way that it's... Again, it, it, it no, they, comes they, down they, to the enforcement and the... And, and it is it is, it is to, the fault of the landlord, too, because, like, the homeowner says, these guys change the locks and claim they live here. And the cop goes, okay, bye. If she said, help, these men broke into my house, it'd be a different story. What I'm also saying, though, is there's an incentive structure that's set up here. Yeah. And the incentive structure for that officer is going to be to follow the path that's laid out for them. So if the path on this way is, I know if I mess with the squatter that you know, I'm going to have the entire city coming after me or worse, then they're not going to do that. And this is the same way that we saw, you want to talk about not enforcing laws. Uh, the reason the homicide rate went, went up after George Floyd was because of police sitting home. And you're right, the selective enforcement, they stopped going after violent criminals. Look what happened in every single major city in America, except for Baltimore, because in Baltimore it already happened. Jason Dixon says, Tim, you, Tim voted for these Dems, these laws then cries. I mean, I don't know why you said that last time, too, because that's just not true. Like, I voted one time in 2008 for the for the first time and then went... Wow, these people are liars. So then I did not vote at all until 2020 when I voted down to get Republican. Like, so what was the point of saying that? I think I voted for right. Jill Stein in 2016. I didn't vote in 2016 or 2012. I said, these people are liars. Uh, Liam Gardner, last Super Chat, he says, I understand people's reservations about Neuralink, but I'm 29, an incomplete paraplegic and professional firefighter. I got hurt on the job, and I'm counting the seconds till motion control phase because I need to get back to work. Not a job. It's who you are. Yes. That's, Agreed. That's awesome, and that's that's the... The whole point to do Neuralink, like just that alone makes the risks of having Neuralink and, and stuff like that makes the risk worth it. I don't, so, I don't think anyone opposes Neuralink for anyone who's in I wouldn't say anyone. <laughs> that's in those situations. Okay, fair enough. But I, I think there are people who have a healthy skepticism of how it will 100% be abused. And when people like this get control of Neuralink technology, bad things are going By to this, it's not the super chatter. You mean the people in the book that you're I'm writing about? I'm pointing to the book, if anyone's um, uh, on yo, the audio to side. the guy, if you've ever had spinal injury in Rice University, they figured out how to, how to regrow the spines of mice that had had their spines severed by inserting graphene nano threads, these ribbons that meet together, and then the spine regrows along the threads. They severed a, mi a mouse's spine within like 21 days. It was almost back to complete normal. So that's upcoming technology to regrow spinal activity keep your eyes on that stuff out of rice university jim tour is the scientist that's pioneering that one last thing real quick uh where is it uh right here last budget uh fallison says is there an update with the app or has it been abandoned after the switch to scnr uh the app still functions completely normally but you're right the news articles haven't been updated so we do need to fix that so they link to scnr.com which is not tim kessner it's a different company but uh that being said we'll get that we'll get that done smash the like button subscribe to the channel share the show with your friends head over to timcast.com click join us become a member support our work directly by being a member and most importantly join the discord when you become a member you're helping fund the show, all the people who work here, all of our operations and culture and everything. You're helping us build the uh, Casper physical location. 
We're going to have a members only space where people can physically hang out. But the most important thing is you join the discord, you talk to people, you network, you build community. Digital is not so great, but it's a good first step. In a few months, when we get the, the building in Martinsburg, West Virginia done, there will be the elite members club where you will get a, your own your own key card and you can swipe yourself in during open hours because we have to have people working there. 100 bucks a month. If you're an elite member, you have access. The point of it, I know 100 bucks a month is a lot, but it's so that we can hire staff to maintain it, to stock it with 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 goods and create a social club. I assure you, this club is substantially cheaper than the two hundred thousand dollars per month they do in New York or the fifty thousand. I'm sorry, twenty thousand a year they do in New York, fifty thousand a year. But hopefully we have a lot of people who start hanging out, organizing, and we can create a space where people can come together and share ideas. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast Jack. You got a book, huh? The book is Unhumans, The Secret History of Communist Revolutions and How to Crush Them. Jack Posobiec, Joshua Lysak. It drops the 4th of July. Can you believe it? Signed a deal with Skyhorse Publishing. Very excited to be there uh, with them. Again, the book is Unhumans, Unhumans, Unhumans. Report unhuman activity. <laughs> I am uh, Phil That Remains on Twix. I'm Phil That Remains official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Amazon Music, YouTube, you know, the internet. And don't forget, the left lane is for crying. Oh, you animal. I'm Ian Crossland. Everyone have a great weekend. Love yourself and your neighbors. Take care of yourself this weekend. Drink a lot of water. Drink water tonight and go to the bathroom when you feel it. Just let it out. Your body doesn't know. If, if you, your body, just let your body, follow your body. Your body doesn't know why you wouldn't. You know, it, it doesn't have a mind. You just gotta, when it has to go, just let it go. You'll feel better. I hope my I'm, toddlers aren't listening to that because yeah, a, we've been I'm, trying to potty train. And listen and to your parents. The one people. is good, but not so much the other one. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to end up that. Uh, thanks, y'all. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Uh, see you around. We got some fun skating over the weekend to do. We're going to be filming for the Boonies. So look out for those clips over on YouTube, Boonies HQ. It's going to be good fun. And we'll see y'all then.